Welcome back, guys. This is your Average Esports Podcast, uh, episode 36. This time, we're going to go over the two biggest tournaments uh, in, rec- in the recent months. TI9 and the Star Ladder Berlin Major, right? A lot so, happened while we were gone. Yeah, a lot of shit happened. And a lot of shit is still happening. Uh, a lot of major roster shuffles going around. But we'll get we'll get to that later. All right, start with um, start with TI, I guess. Yep. I'll start with a big one. All right. So let's just speed through the teams I don't care about as much. Chaos. Much yeah, that... I think you were gonna die to be honest. Yeah. Right. Um. Let's see here. NIP. I'm pretty disappointed in you to be honest. Like. We had them pretty high up, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. I, uh, I, I think I, I had them top six. You think you had them top? Four maybe I don't know. No, not top four, but like no, like also top poten- six maybe. Oh no, probably top eight, top eight, whatever. Yeah, top eight, top top eight, top four probably. Yeah, really, really do PPD, but like can't really no. do much of that team, I guess. What do you? What it do you was think? Kind of t- <clears throat> I mean, in hindsight, it really was the team from the year before, just like a worse version of it, right? Yeah. Um, it just, I mean, we've we've mentioned it numerous times before the limitations of the roster in terms of like individual positions and some of the players like with no, most notably i think ace and fata mm-hmm. and not really pulling through um and them having to adjust so much to the to the weak hero pools of those two players and then also to them being weak sort of role players in a lot in a lot of ways too um so i think yeah i mean if it, I, it definitely felt like this this ti and maybe maybe this is just sort of like recency bias but this ti more so than any before it felt like if you don't have like really strong course you you won't be able to pull through like it doesn't feel like in it, it, it previous size i've always hit like oh if you have like a really strong four position player maybe like a strong offlaner you can cheese your way into sort of like a couple of games and wins and stuff like that they can carry you through but i felt like this ti more so than ever you really needed strong strong course like like one and two positions if you really really wanted yeah, to make basically it you weren't gonna shiki your way to a finals <laughs> so. yes absolutely absolutely right okay uh Fair enough, because like I'm, I'm like thinking through all the different like top teams. They all had pretty strong cores. Like uh, exactly, and, and like I, I think um, if if we look at previous big runs, there's always there hasn't necessarily always been like a carry or a mid that stood out, but more so I think to me it always was like offlane or four positions that were really really big in a couple of TIs. But mm-hmm. this TI to me, one and two positions needed to be really strong for you to succeed. And I mean, we're gonna get into this, but I think this is also one of the reasons why, for example, T Secret didn't even make it as far as they probably should have. Um, you know, based on based on their season performance, uh, but also why EG did so well in the playoffs and versus their group stage, for example. Um, I think they did about this similar, but I guess we'll, well get actually, to... yeah, the, the group I think, stage. Kind I don't of think they were that great. But, yeah. but okay, let's talk about. Um... Well, first I'll go over the teams I think placed approximately where they should have. Navi, Mineski, Keen, Infamous, uh, Arn. Actually, no, Alliance. All those I think placed where they should have. The only caveat yeah, there is Alliance, because well, I know you believe in them. I don't, because I was like, it's fucking. Pr- it's like the most, the biggest, highest I, pressure you can possibly hope for. Like I will say though, and I pretty much, I, I did actually say this in the previous well. If they play a best of one, probably gonna drop out. Yeah. If they have to did. play the best of one, they're probably gonna drop out. I did think that if they had to play the upper bracket, I could see them sneaking a win against some of these teams because they had that upset potential. And I, f- I still think that, you know, in, in the group stage, they showed that they had the potential to technically beat everybody uh, to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the best of one just, I mean, they screwed themselves over in the best of one, right, with a missed pick. Yeah. Um, I think Mineski was was quite the upset. They performed better than I expected. Um, I mean, they performed yeah, the better in the like, group stages than I expected, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're the playoffs, I mean, obviously, if you play against Secret, there's only so much you can show, right? Mm-hmm. But their group stage was so much better than I expected, because if they had, I mean, they were so close to even make up a bracket. That was kind of scary, mm-hmm. actually. Um, but yeah, other than that, I agree with you. The rest is just really fully expected. Um, newbie. Um, honestly, I think Fnatic was worse than I expected, also. Just throwing that out there. And I didn't honestly, really, really have very high I, expectations for them yeah, to begin with. That's that's true. I expected them to at least be like ninth or twelfth. I did not think that they would go out thirteenth, sixteenth. But at the same time, I, me personally, and it's funny that I say that. I I thought that after that loss, all right, cool, they're gonna shake things up. They have to realize now that this formula is not gonna work. But they're still gonna be pretty much the same team now. Like 
I know we're gonna talk about Rossi Chini's not in a different video, but still, like this this is the kind of loss at the TI where you should learn and be like, all right, fundamentally speaking, there's something wrong with this roster, right? From like not just like composition wise, but even like there's something deeply wrong with how you approach the game if you come into this in, come into this tournament as the best team in your region and drop out as the worst. But, well, I, I didn't think they were the best team in the region. I thought that was TNT, well, but I, I can't. Of, I in get terms what you of, mean. In terms of points, right? They oh, have in terms more, of points, yeah, have, yeah, that more do PC points than than them. But yeah, but I think we both. Well, whatever. I, oh, yeah, I get what both, you mean because like we both agree, TNC came in. As the, 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 the fucked up thing about Fnatic is like on paper they should be better than TNC. They should be. They should be a top six team in the in the world. Maybe yeah. even top four on, mm -hmm. on absolute paper. But um, yeah, but oh, well. like obviously they're. Actually, actually, on paper, on paper, this specific roster, in particular, not necessarily because Jabs as, as one is absolute garbage, in my opinion. But well, I mean, um, but the other well, here's the thing: you have Abed, Ice, 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 and DJ. True, uh, that's still pretty fucking good. Like, yeah. I don't, I, I like the, even the one previous to this one probably was a better roster on paper, but like it didn't work out either. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, right. There's something fucked up about that roster. <laughs> I think work. in the bottom I think in the bottom ten we agree the two teams that we did not expect there. Well maybe we agree, but VP and TNC. I think we both agree that VP was gonna tilt again. Yeah, I thought VP I again. thought VP might have ended up here straight up. I, I I wouldn't have put it out of the realm of possibilities. I'm still kind of expecting like a top eight performance of them. I thought was... I, I think I think like um the fact that they don't believe that they're chokers means they're chokers. Make some bigger chokers than they Make some bigger are. chokers than they than they than they uh, necessarily have to be. Like, yeah. I'll give you a quick anecdote. Like, you know Sue, the uh, StarCraft two player, the Kong of Kongs, mm. like the greatest Kong yeah. of all Kongs. In the first like f fucking three finals or something, he didn't actually believe he was a choker, and so he never actually like dealt with the fact that like, oh, this is an actual problem I have to deal with. Like a mental block, actually. Yeah, and then by the, and then by the time he realized it, it was like too late. But, like, he just had to be such yeah. a good player. He eventually won one eventually. But, like, you know, like I think that's kind of, like, Virtus Pro's problem. Yeah. Actually, Virtus Pro have, like, a bunch of problems. So, uh, I, get, I, he, all right, I guess I'll break down everything Virtus Pro has going wrong. Right? First, the first aspect is, like, they ran into the Liquid trap. Except they're not even as good as Liquid. And what I mean by that is, like, the, the thing I praise Liquid for is, like, they ran with the same roster for so long and were so consistently good which pro which meant like they they were at least strategically and in terms of team play and in terms of like mental fortitude were like a much stronger team than probably people give them credit for whereas like virtus pro in terms of mentality in terms of like the ability to reinvent themselves i don't think they had that and you kind of see this that result here and you saw in the previous ti before that like if you look through the last three ti's where they had this particular roster I think the only one, the only like playoff series where they played to their level was against Liquid in Liquid's run in TI Seven. Yeah, and every other time they've choked, and that's like and, the final problem. Is like they keep choking and it keeps getting worse. And I think, and w w which I think is really important to talk about, and I think this is really, um, this is now more so apparent than ever in, in if you look at how they split apart now, mm -hmm. is that yeah they choke, but I feel like there's reasons for why they choke, right? Like, a team... I think this... Well, in previous TIs, it's been e way too easily sort of written off. Like, oh, yeah, VP just choked. Like, but but how did they choke? What did they choke? What was the weakness in that team? Like, people think it's just a mental block that suddenly, oh, we can't win anymore. But no. I think the team has fundamental issues and had fundamental issues mm -hmm. that they couldn't really overcome. And there was late bear at the best at the, at the biggest stage mm -hmm. that people didn't necessarily talk about it. and probably vp themselves didn't even realize that they had or didn't address necessarily like you said they didn't think that they choked but what what how did they address those losses then? did they just because i feel like the way they've lost every year is almost the same like they didn't they didn't really play the same style that they used to to actually dominate the entire scene up until that point right yeah they, they didn't they, really they, adapt to the like yeah that's part of it the other part is like they just weren't as good and, and they didn't adapt to, and they didn't adapt to the meta of the tournament itself yeah. either they were so maybe it's because they were so used to setting their own meta or maybe they're so used to just playing their own thing but they just never adapted to what the meta dictated in these ti's and that's kind of you know what what costs you the run and i mean now with um with ramses and solo splitting and solo apparently demanding to or planning to be captain again you kind of have to wonder if um there was just internal strife that 
you know, I Ramsey mean, might not be <laughs> might not he, be the right captain for the team. Let's. Let, I'll be real for a second. I think Ramsey's fucked up the drafts in the last two years for Ti specifically. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and he was. I mean, he was responsible for those. So, if you yeah. like, that's that's a really that's really obvious. Like, that's a really obvious like answer. And he wasn't as good either. Like, that's also there. But I will say this: it, the funny thing about Verse Pro is like because nobody talks about this for whatever reason. Is I think. I think no one and Ramsey's are probably going to be similar to like Burning, where like they're going to be like all time great players. They're never going to win TI. Probably. Yeah. Right. Cause or I, I, as, I, as we could call it, they're like Ortiz. Yeah. Cause like I, I like, I, I think no one's probably better. I think like I would rank no one higher than like Simeo as a mid laner all time. Right. I think that. It's kind of iffy, but I think I would do it, right? Oof. But no, I would I would still rate Sumail over him. Like, but I, I would say, well, like last few years, he's been fucking amazing. No, no one. That's true. That's true. And everybody, everybody always tells me, always, I, I, and I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but like the a few of those years were like really fucking competitive, right? Oh, Way more sure, tournaments. Sure. His consistency is like untouchable compared to Sumail. Like Sumail's consistency isn't even close. Like, Sumail has never been this consistent for this long, right? That's true. Probably, yeah. The only thing Sumail has over... Well, actually, there's two things. He, I think his peak potential is higher. Like, he's shown that at times. I think, like, his raw ceiling is better. And he's clutcher. But, like, that's about it. So that's why, I like... like if you, That's why I think I'd probably put no one over him at this point. But that's, a, but that's an interesting... Uh point though as well now with the with the upcoming roster shuffle not to again go too much off track but um if rumors are really true and they are really gonna go both gonna go their separate ways with these teams we can really see their potential now or because they're gonna be out of outside of their comfort zone right mm -hmm. um these two teams made their these two players made their names in these teams and they've sort of like built these teams around them in a lot of ways or te te these teams have been built around them so it's gonna be interesting to see how they fare in different um scenarios Right. Well, the other team that kind of actually I won't call it failed. I just think like they ran into like with uh, TNC. I think TNC, TNC could probably beat like. I think they might have been able to even beat Secret maybe, but uh, Liquid beat them right. So like, I think I think they were at least like one round better than they were than they should have been. But they ran into Secret. Probably, but That's I think I'd say it. I agree, but I think again if if you look at how they lost against Liquid, you could tell or you could see that this team was also still just too. Raw. It was too soon for this team now. Like, if, if you had given them maybe a couple more months' time for this team to literally, like, work on themselves, they probably would have performed significantly better. But See, like, here's the, the thing. I, that... I don't believe that anymore. Like, how many maybe... years did we give Virtus Pro time? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's super random. I, I'll, I'll just say it. It's super random as to whether or not That's Chorus can actually grow to be good enough to play at TI. It's super That's... fucking random. Like, I made an entire That's article about OG... Like, basically, the whole point, the whole, like, I don't know if anybody read it or not, but the whole point of the article is basically, like, fundamentally speaking, being good at Dota year long requires completely different things than being good at TI. Absolutely. No, absolutely. So, I don't think, like, extra months of experience necessarily helps the team be good at TI, straight up. That, that's a very fair point. Though I, I think in this particular case, and this is why I said it, is because you could see a progression of this team from like all these tournaments that we've seen them before, right? Mm -hmm. Birmingham, um, I forgot all these other events already. Um, yeah, but I know what you mean. Like the majors. Yeah, so, yeah, so for, for me, TNC has been about progression and trying to sort of like become a better team. And not only even just become a better team, but even becoming better individuals as in terms of... Um, because all of these players have been, or most of these players have been around for like forever. Yeah. But they all needed to sort of like work on themselves really a lot of times. You know, I mean, I think when we when we talk about TNC, we used to use the words such as like they lack discipline or whatever. But they've sort of like been working on a lot of these aspects that we used to describe SCA teams and the CIS teams with you know those raw like cavemen, whatever. But this doesn't apply. This hasn't applied to them for the longest time. But these are the things that they still need to work on, right? Um, and I think maybe in like a month or two, I don't know it's just difficult to sell to, to say but the way they've been progressing it definitely felt like they were ramping up to becoming a better team but um, yeah I, I think against Liquid especially it showed how sort of like green they still are mm -hmm. um, that, that, that match in particular felt like Liquid 
was almost destined to win because they just like it, from the draft I was, I was already all right liquid got this because it just felt like liquid so Nick was super experienced in this environment. Like they, they, they've played these matches, they've played these scenarios before, and it just felt like they were super comfortable. TNC felt a little bit uncomf- uh, uncomfortable, maybe also very nervous like, given the situation. Um, but yeah, it's unfortunate, especially if you consider who actually got into the next round. Like who, who, like if you look at Infamous, Royal never give up. I feel like if you had given TNC any of these teams, newbie, uh, Mineski, I feel like if you had given them any of these teams, Virtus Pro. Even for the Pro, yeah. If you'd given them any of these teams, TNC probably makes into the next round. But that's just, yeah. That's just away. life, yeah. Or life, yeah. All right. I mean, I, I will give props. I think they played a pretty good uh, upper bracket round against Vici. Well, for sure. And and the, see, this is the, these are the two sides of the of the medallion, right? Or the story here that is TNC. On one hand, you have this insane match against Vici Gaming, which could have, quite frankly, gone both ways. Yeah. Um, and TNC could have won. If TNC wins this, we maybe talk about a whole different TI. But they barely lose it, and then they get absolutely crushed by Team Liquid, who's just on a monster run, who's so much more experienced, who has no nerves, no uh, is super calm. And TNC is just, oh please, please, let's just not go. All. Like I, I definitely think you could tell that they were super nervous in that match. All right, since we're in on the v- drafting fell off. Yeah. Uh, since we're on Vici, I think they're kind of similar to Virtus Pro. I mean, it doesn't look like it because they've finished so much higher. And I've got to say, outside of that TNC series, they were not good. They were not good. I agree. Um, even their group stage to me felt a little bit flat. I know they, they were, were like second place in their. They group, made it through. Think... Like they, were, they were like results were good. Like this wasn't the TN. This wasn't the Vici that made me like confident they could win. I th- yeah. I thought their performance throughout the season was stronger than they, what they showed this TI. Um, yeah. Again, yeah, they made second place, but I think a lot of that was also because a lot of teams in their group were underperforming. I mean. Literally, their team, their, their group had some really, really weak teams. I mean, uh, here, here's, the I way, say, uh, here's the way to put it. it. It Usually every year in the group stage, the group with the best, uh, with the champion also ends up being like the best group retroactively because the champion taught them the meta. Yeah. In this group, no, everybody fucking dropped out except Vici r- really early. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. Actually, everybody dropped out early except OG. Like, think about well, that. Well, I guess... I mean, I guess how I guess it depends on how we def- define early. Right? Early relative to where that we should they should have been. Not true, 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 true. Like all um, of them did. Yeah. Except maybe top, Nob, except OG, maybe OG's, Nobby. OG, OGC only top four team out of this group, huh? Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. But I. I, I think. Yeah. Vici Gaming worse performance than what they showed during throughout the season, and in my opinion, this comes back to the course. I. I mean, this is. I, I'm going to keep making this argument, but. Paparazzi and Ori, we've been talking about this at length when we talk about these teams. All the time. We were convinced that maybe they fund the final, they finally fund the formula to make this work. And I mean, it looked like I mean, it you were season. convinced. I, 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 was I, convinced. I believe in everything I was... up till TI. At TI, is like, no, I'm out. That's absolutely fair. That's absolutely fair. <laughs> um, and again, I think there was a very lackluster performance from both players, this yeah. TI. I am not surprised. Um, to me, they were actually not the best players on their team. Fade, in my opinion, was actually one of the best players on this team. And then he retired uh, and went to a new team. <laughs> and then shout he, out yeah. to, to uh, Xiao Wei, the uh, master. The master influence uh, this China even now. Obviously, when I when I say you know disappointing and all that, like we're still talking about a team that plays top six, but at the same time we're also talking about the team that we expected to contend for, like maybe even the finals. Teams had them as the favorites, like there were people having them as like the the team. I think I even picked them to win. You picked, the, you picked them to win, yeah. yeah. I think I picked them to and win. I, too, so. I didn't pick them to win, but I said I think I said something like, if uh, going up into TI, I'd probably say they had the best cores. Paparazzi yeah. and Ori. Yeah. And uh, now look at them. They're sixth place and they got, I mean, a- again, even the way they played didn't even really leave anything to be, des- uh, to be desired. They got crushed by LGD and against TNC, they looked sloppy. TNC looked almost like the better team. I say almost because that third game was kind of one sided. That third game was a smashing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, because I think at that point, TNC's like, oh my God, if we lose here, we go down. And then like, the yeah. whole mental collapse thing started happening yeah, I, immediately. I agree. Whereas like Vici is like, oh, we always beat these guys, and they're like, oh fuck, it's PSG LGD, and they they kowtowed like was fu- they were a fucking emperor of China, even yeah. though Burning's just a prince. He's not the emperor, guys. He didn't have to like kowtow that hard, but whatever. Yeah, it was absolutely sad. Um, Vici Gaming, I don't know what happened, but uh, they uh, crashed and burned. Like, and, he- and this 
the what's sad disappointing thing is, is like they didn't even put up a fight against Secret. That's that's yeah, my, that's my exactly. real problem with them. Exactly. It didn't look like they were trying to like they they gave it their all this like their lifeblood. Even though we we know based off of the like the interview of Fade like was crushed like and he he cried and all that shit. But well, I mean Fade should cry. He tried so hard and carried so he hard. Try. He did try really hard. He did try really hard. Um, but yeah, again, Ori Paparazzi, I don't know, man. I want to believe in this duo because on paper, this duo should be. I mean, it's the same with Artesia and Sumail, isn't it? I keep making this. No, comp- I don't. I don't believe. To me, I'm done. I'm done with both of these core. I'm done with these yeah. both of these core duos, same. man. Like, how many years do I got to stick with them, man? No, I'm done. Absolutely, I'm done. But maybe we as well go over to the other EG core, the other EG. I think I. I think I called this one straight up. Almost exactly. Actually, I don't know the exact placement, but like this, this rules were exactly where I thought they'd be, right? So, yeah. when, when the goings get tough, EG gets going out of the tournament. Wasn't particularly impressive from EG. They, I don't know. It was just almost, they were, to me, they were almost non existent this TI, to be honest. Like, it, all right, here's the thing. Like, Last TI, they um, set the meta, I think, right? They, or I won't say overall. I think they set the me- net meta initially, but then they didn't adapt to what LGD and what OG were coming up with because both of them obviously came up with very different answers yeah. by the end, right? This one, they're like they just kind of played along, and then they got no- and then when they ran into a better team, OG, got knocked the fuck out, and then they ran into a way more clutch team, Liquid, got knocked the fuck out, and then it was over. Honestly, I think this TI was even like worse than just playing along. It just felt like they didn't really have any sort of like they didn't real have meta any, approach. They didn't have any answers. That's my problem. Like, and I don't mean like answers just in the draft because obviously they didn't have answers in the draft. I just mean like answers as in like t- their team play wasn't like like here's the thing when Liquid go down, like part of you thinks maybe there's like maybe they'll pull some bullshit team play team play thing out of their ass right yeah. think <laughs> and, and they did throughout this entire bracket like i'm gonna go on and say if this was a normal tournament they would be knocked the fuck out in the loser stage by tnc if this was a normal tournament but ci yeah. so obviously their clutch like their clutch in the team play shit like really shine through the entire run like, up until og but like right here is like eg doesn't have that well, I was like, okay, well, maybe you'll bullshit your way out with like a really good RTZ performance, a really good Samuel performance. Oh no, wait, it's Ti. They they've lost all that mojo. Uh, or actually, RTZ never had it, but like Samuel lost all his I, mojo. I will, I will say that from a from in the group stage, and even I would say even in the secret match, I think RTZ and Samuel actually played a solid tournament. Mm-hmm. If if the expectations for this team weren't higher, significantly higher, I'd say they even played a good tournament. But to me, because I to me, this team should be top three, right? Like this team, top three this team is an all-star team. So if, basically, if you're not making top three, if you're not winning, actually, I won't say you're not, actually, you're not winning, but like, generally speaking, you should be in like the top four at least. Yeah, I agree. And um, so that was an okay tournament up until then. And I know that the Haas even tweeted out stats for like Sumail. Oh, it's like the best, like one of his best performances at a TI. But I disagree. To me, I mean, in terms of in terms of stats, perhaps. But he was not as clutch as he was in previous tests, so no, most notably when they won, right? So, um, like, like I'll, I'll, I'll write it this way. I think his best TI was obviously with PPD, uh, PPD yeah. when they won. But his second best TI is clearly the time when they lost to DC, right? Yes. And then yes. none of the other TIs even come fucking close. Like, let's yeah. not even kid ourselves. So this TI incredibly disappointing they never showed up to me they never had a plan as to how to win any game they just showed up and no quite frankly i think a lot of the games that they won was largely due to being a better team like better players across the board because Mm -hmm. that's what eg has going for them they are on on every position they have like top 10 players maybe not the five position sorry fly Mm -hmm. but in terms of mechanical skill he's just not that actually he's still pretty fucking good but like here's the thing about about fly i think he realizes he isn't that good so that's why he's, he's always picking like very safe picks for himself but because he does that like he's never really a liability so yeah he isn't and he, he's, he's not yeah exactly he's not he's never the the five support that gets like killed 10 times in 10 minutes like that's uh you definitely have to give that to him but like even if all right let's just say they have 10 top 10 players on every position well, i mean clearly that's enough to you know place like top six but it again against that liquid team it never seemed like they were 
you know, putting out. Uh, honestly, I will say to uh, to me, Ortizy, his performance definitely led me to believe that he desperately wanted this. But again, for every yeah. everybody else, it almost felt like they gave up. Yeah. It, it, Actually, I will, I will say like Ortizy was pretty good. Yeah. So I, I'll give him that. Like he's better. It was better than usual. His usual TI uh, performances. But like that's not enough. Not for TI, especially not for this particular team. Like. I guess actually I don't know if EG is going to continue on with this five, but I'll I'll say this: we've seen this te- team together for a year. They've only played. I think they've only played to their level once, and that was at like the previous TI. Yeah, and they got. They, if anything, they got worse throughout the season. Yeah, like so. I think like if if we're tr- if, if we're legitimately like trying to grade teams, um, based like here like here's generally how you should how I grade teams and leaders is like, do they make more? of the individuals like do they make it the sum greater than its parts i think the sum is less than its parts in eg yeah absolutely right so i think i think i won't say like fly is a failure because i think this is a very hard team to captain to be honest but i will say like like i, I forget I, I probably should have said the interview but basically like ppd was taught i think ppd might have been talking to somebody in some interview it basically said like the essential problem with eg was like he wanted to get them to practice and they didn't want to practice. And yeah, that this, this, he was specifically talking about like the RTZ Sumail period and eventually got outed. Right. But like, who PPD got like, um, like, you know, all kingships eventually die, whatever. But PPD, I, I think that essential problem has stayed in the team and I think it'll stay in the team for the rest of time. So long, so long as like, uh, I'm going to go ahead and guess it's going to be Arteezy and Sumail who kind of like don't want to play a bunch of scrims or whatever. Cause that's like the only, that's the only line that that's consistent at this point. But like whatever the case, like they're never, they're never going to be close to um, where they could be. That's all. I, I will say, I will say obviously it has been quite some time since not only the interview, but also since his time with EG. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that, that is the prevalent issue right now but it's definitely obvious that there's something with this duo that's just not working out mm-hmm. this duo in particular um and but honestly to me it's just and here's the thing like they basically got like the two guys who should have made it work because i think yeah as far as as sacrificial and as good of an offlaner as you can hope for in the west that can complement them it's not working creates pretty good support not working fly like a pretty stable captain not working like listen and they've tried it with so many different iterations as well and like they have had so many different players on these positions and as you said like right now and we talked about this last year as well when they got this roster like this should be the combination and if you look at these players and we've mentioned how or we've talked about how these play styles are much easier and sumail might not work out together because they're so greedy and they need these people to compensate for that and we, they did get them it's still not working out. All right, now you have to realize that it just can't work out. And I mean, the rumors do indicate that they can't stick together. Like I'll, I'll put it this way: man for man, this team trumps PPD's EG. Any version of it, any version of PPD's EG, this man, this this version trumps it, man for man. Well, this, but that's this why... version, this version of EG is like worse than all the good versions that PPD led. The one with the AUI, the one with fears, the one with like. Like all those, like even the one random one with Mason in the sand in was better than this EG. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's but that's why that's also why um why or well in all fairness though, and we we may not have ever gotten a, would have never gotten an answer to that, but we never really found out what would what would have happened if PPD had the chance to captain these two, right? I mean, he did at the uh, end, but like it wasn't oh. like but it was like a it was like an entire like problem. Yeah, like he, he like he didn't get enough time to solve it, and then he was outed before he did. Exactly, so. he was it was a very short lived thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so in that sense, we don't really know if he could have made it work either. I don't, but yeah. I don't think like, I don't think he could have made it work straight up. But like I think, I think he, I think if he had kept control of power, like like I keep saying is like if he was like a true tyrant as NA truly need, need needs, um, at least in the Dota two scene, they need a tyrant like that. And if he was that tyrant, then I think they'd be in a better place, even though they'd probably have less skilled players. Yeah, um, I will say though that um, do, do you remember the whole the whole um, roundtable that um, Thorn did on Artizi and whether or not he could ever win a TI? 
Yeah. Um, I think I think now is a clutch time to prove for ITZ to prove to himself, but also to the world, whether or not he can actually win a TI. I don't think because he can. I think. Well, I don't. Well, that's well, the thing. Because right? here's here's my uh, problem. Here's my uh, problem with that. If Fy can't win TI, that means literally nobody can. Like I, I mean that as in like you can't like just be fucking awesome and win TI. Right. Like that's not that's not the way to win TI. <laughs> that's that's a fair point, and there's like super there's super there's a lot of luck involved in it, right? Though I think for TZ, a first set would be at least to win like majors, and then he's already failing at that, right? Even yeah. though. Like he should be, even though he's on a team I, with a filled with a bunch of major winners yeah. and TI winners and all that. Yes. So I, I think to me, I think to me, one of the big things that he faces now and that that he needs to prove to himself, but also again to the rest of the world, is whether or not he can actually build a team around himself that actually does win these tournaments. Because to me, I think one of the big things, one of the big reasons why he's not been part of a team that has won a, a major. Or TI is because he has he terrible makes he has terrible choices in terms of like which teams he chooses to join or which players he chooses to surround himself with. I yeah. say that knowing full well that he's been part of the awesome secret, but obviously they had issues, right? And like it, it, I don't think it's I don't think it's I don't think it's it's a, or it's a coincidence, for example, that he chooses to leave EG in the same year they win TI. Yeah, it's right? not. That, that these are conscious choices that he has made because he doesn't believe in the right people and he believes in the wrong people. Like he's notoriously believed in the wrong people, in my opinion. Like not saying that these people are wrong, but like to to stick to this roster for this long, like to me that is a mistake. Like it was a gamble at the first, I'm sure, but it obviously hasn't worked. How long have they been playing together for now? Three, four years? Something like that. It's been a long yeah. time. Um I'll, I'll say this like superstars fundamentally usually speaking have a fundamentally different uh view of the game compared to leaders or even support players and i mean that and like the traditional like not i mean that more in like you know like the five the five positions who aren't necessarily uh leaders because usually the fives are leaders but like basically those types right or like right. the role players whatever like they have a fundamentally different view where they're like the for whatever reason they judge people by skill rather than like the overarching sort of system and that's always why like i like remember the first time when ppd retired right yeah uh i i think i wrote an article at the time basically saying ppd is the most important player to ever come out of na history like he's not the most skilled he will never be like in the top 10 like player list but i thought he was the literal most important player that would ever come out of na history and i think you're, even though you, you, whether or not you want you can go ahead and count all these different fucking EU NA mixes like that like played in EG or whatever all of them pale all of them pale in comparison to what PPD did and I think that's because he had a much better vision of how you're supposed to play a team game and not only that but also how to build a team yeah and how to build around your team I mean he won with AY AY has literally not accomplished anything outside of the TI run I love the guy I, he career. did something with the Eternal Envy. Let's, we, we, well, you might want to write that off, but that was a pretty good run. That was a pretty good run. But his career outside of the TI run is a little string of failed finals. Mm -hmm. And then just failing from team to team to team to team, right? Like he literally it, it was a huge collapse right after the TI run. Yeah. And like to me, being able to win these kind of tournaments... Like he, Su Sumail, can, Sumail can hate PPD all he wants, but his career would not be the same if it wasn't for PPD. PPD might not have been the one that discovers him. PPD might not have made him into the player that he is today. But he has successfully built a team around Sumail that won him these tournaments. And his career would be totally different if he didn't start with a DAC win and then obviously went on the to win TI. Win, yeah. Like, I, I think PPD knows how to craft a team that wins i say this even though we just talked about this awful nip team like here, but here's the here's the difference here, here's why i'm like not hating i'm not hating the nip squad as much as i hate like as i'm hating this eg squad like i don't think ppd was in a position to like pick to hand pick all the best players he wants he wasn't as far as i know either and and it was also at a difficult time because a lot of good players were already set in teams yeah like we've never had we haven't had a big shuffle in years now 
So I think right now is the time to sort of like prove that you know how to build a team, you know, yada, yada, yada. And there's also politics involved because he desperately, he wanted to play in Europe. He wants to live in Stockholm. He wants to live in Sweden, whatever, yeah, cool. apparently. So there's like, there's like that part of the politics involved too, right? Yep. Um, but like, here's the, here, here's the thing. So like, this, this is off tangent, but like, if I know, for instance, you don't have like a pick of a letter and, and I know like you're making way, like, I'll put it this way. I'll put it this way. Theoretic, theoretically, think name all of the best leaders of all time, right? So we got Puppy, you got Kuroki, you got uh, Fly, you got Solo, Shao Wei, whatever, right? Right. Imagine, well, I guess in Shao Wei's case, imagine he spoke English for a moment. Imagine all of them leading this squad, this NIP squad. The only guy I can theoretically think can make this can make this team have better results is Shao Wei. Like that's mm. it, and this is like it's only because Xiaoyi just randomly does things with his random ass Chinese teams. That's very true. Like that's that's like that's his like secret powers. Like I can I can randomly get four pub pub stars and get them an instant result. Like that's that's his like weird power. But like, uh, I think I think Kuro could have also worked. I don't uh, think Kuro we'll could, I don't think Kuroki could have done it with this squad because I've never seen him play through the off lane. Uh, I th I think he could have. I think he could have. Like I. I like here's. I mean, you've never seen him see play through the off lane. But as in, like he's the only star you have. He's like your main superstar. Yeah, that's that's. Like uh, wh what what team what team did he have where he's like your main superstar is off later? That's true. That's true. Like that's so, a really weird. That's a really weird combination to have. Yeah, that's true. Right, like, what's like pretty much like I can't see it. I can't say it with anybody else. I I think I think I think what. What what speaks to me about Kuroki though, and I think this is um, this is something that I think. Uh, but I think Kuroki would have. I, I don't think Kuroki would have ever been in this position. To be honest. And, and and even Puppy, I think Kuroki and Puppy have been known to really, um, build up players around them and make them so much better than they actually were. Mm. Like, I think for example, again, we've talked about AY. And I mean, yeah, he, right? I, I I agree with you. I think, I think at this point, it's pretty easy to say like Puppy and Kuroki. Are probably the best teachers of Dota. Yeah, because they 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 give you so much knowledge and they make you so much better than they they make the best they they make sure that you show the best version of yourself. Because we literally talked about how this core team was how these two cores were trash for NIP and this is why they lost. Puppy placed top six with them. They they were literally on secret last year and he placed top six with them, right? Um, and then well, not I, all of them, but I I know what you mean like similar well, player some of the some of the well, similar players Ace Ace and Fata right yeah um so I think I think both of them uh, I mean this is like a super weird con uh, theory a uh, theoretic example in anyway but I think both of them could have de technically done a really good job with that team um but that's kind of the, beside the point anyway I mean I think the point that you're trying to make and I 100 percent agree with this like this was such a weird team to make to the to TI in general. And the kind of the point that we were making about PPD stands anyway, because he's proven himself over years to sort of like build really good teams. And I mean, the fact that he got to TI with this roster is kind of a miracle in its, in its own way, mm -hmm. considering how competitive EU was mm -hmm. um, versus, I mean, <laughs> this is such a weird point to make, but, you know, have RTZ or Sumail proven this outside of EG yet? Like, because they've been always in this sort of like comfort zone, you know, can they really build good teams or... Do they just build well, these random I, I, stacks of? Well, we we already know. For instance, Sumail oh. holds most of the power, so we know he doesn't make good teams. That's true. That's true, actually. And uh, I mean, I, know I can't that... say the same for Arteezy. I just know he makes like weird decisions, but like at least oh. they, at least there's like a, a logical consistency to them. Absolutely no, you're absolutely right. We we do actually know that our, Sumail has sort of been largely responsible for a lot of these roster changes in the past couple of years on EG. So yeah, he definitely has not built the best team and. I say this. I say this knowing full but, well that they've got like, like here, a series of like third but, place placements. Yeah, but right? like here's the thing. Like like I said, if like that culture thing is like still in there, like and like he's not practicing as hard, and like it doesn't matter if he this could actually be the best team of all time, but it doesn't matter if he's not like practicing or whatever or not putting whatever. If that's like, if that's like, if that's true, obviously nobody knows. But I'm just saying like that's that's like another that that's just from the outside. It's like it's not working, and it should, but whatever. Like. I'm done with EG, and I think EG are, should yeah. be done with EG at this point, right? Uh, I agree. I think EG is very much done with themselves. Right. So let's talk about a uh, secret, I guess. Yeah, worth worth talking about for sure. So coming in here, uh, favorites, 
And I did say right before I didn't think they were going to win. I think I was correct in that assessment. I thought they actually didn't play as good as they should have, though. And my boy Zai, he uh, kind of wasn't as good as I hoped. Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of weird to say that because Zai is usually always the best player on his team. Mm-hmm. I think I legitimately think every TI he's played, he's always been the best player on his team. Except this one. Except this one. Um, but I will say that I think the team collectively was just kind of weird. To me, mid one has played the worst season in his professional career, mm-hmm. um, and this sort of like culminated at this TI. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know where the fuck he was this season. To be honest, um, I mean, I don't think it mattered he, this season because like they were winning everything. That's and that's the thing, and I think this is kind of like one of the things that when everything's going right, and this is sort of like the VP syndrome, right? When when things are going right, you don't really see the actual problem. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and I don't think they ever realized or maybe even wanted to address the fact that this season was completely horrendous from him, in comparison to what we used from him, or used to from him, obviously. Um, so I think if they had a stronger mid one, they probably. I had difficult to say whether or not they're being. No, I don't think so. I, like the problem with like saying like, oh yeah, mid one. If he was better, that would that would be great. It's like um, solve this true. But like obviously, Zai was worse, and yeah, then I don't think their true. drafts were actually that great. No, I I think especially in that liquid well, series, the drafts were very very off. Like I think I like I they never found. They never found like an identity, I guess. That's really fucking weird to say that because it got top four or whatever it was. Yeah, I think they're fourth. But I guess yeah. it is, is like, I I don't know if you read it, but like Seb put out a blog and I agree with, I agree with like his assessment. It was basically like, he like basically this year's meta didn't really evolve out, out of the group stages. It didn't. Like basically like OG set the meta and then nobody had an answer. The end. I think this is also why we see a, such a big roster shuffle right now. I think a lot of these rosters were just overdue. And a lot of like these players were just overdue. Like they, like they, it, all, they all tricked themselves into thinking, oh, we could all stick together and it'll be fun. Yeah. Like, it, it's kind of weird that I say that, but this happened before TI4, actually. TI4 was literally almost the same, where a lot of like these Western teams suck it out, even though you could have, like, Navi Alliance. You, you knew going into the tournament, they were done after that event. Like, no matter what result they got, this, t- this roster was done. Mm-hmm. Same with a bunch of the Chinese teams as well, uh, because retirement was written on the wall already um so like this felt this feels so similar and this is why we have such a huge roster shuffle because a lot of these teams like they just stuck it out for too long they didn't address a lot of the core problems that they had and this is why you see i know that we we say this is one of the best ti's and it was technically in terms of like you know um well like game i think game quality was really really high we saw a lot of until like, the finals Finals was, well, well, finals was trash. Uh, actually, but I think, I think the, a lot of the lower bracket was pretty bad too. I, I was about to say, and I think I think it's it's no coincidence that we have so many two O's in the lower bracket. Yeah, it's because a lot of these teams, um, there there was a lot of innovation missing. Um, like I think in, if you if you if you look at the sort of like meta performances and like teams addressing the meta, and like it it pales in comparison to last last year. Like last, last year, year, basically there was like three teams, like EG like broke the group stages but then like og and psg lgd like they came with completely different answers and and even when i put we're playing against each other right you could see how they how the meta evolved within like one series yeah. this ti was fell really flat in that comparison yeah and then like, um, it, it just felt like a lot of teams were just trying to sort of like outplay each other it wasn't not a lot of like tactical it was just, it's just a lot of very sort of like, like team fight team coordination yeah basically like the weird thing about here, here, the weird thing about Liquid is like they were pulling out some random things every once in a while, but like they felt like gimmicks rather than actual like strategic changes. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't think honestly, I think, and this is kind of what I think what made allowed Liquid to even uh, make this big of a run is that they approached every game just really literally by itself. They didn't think of a best of three as a as an involvement of sort of like a meta. They're like, they what just do we do every this time? games like what do we do this time? You could tell from their picks, like, oh, we have a Meepo, we have a Earth Spirit, we have, uh, I don't know, let's bring out Alchemist, like these kind of things. Like, Liquid just didn't give a fuck. And that's how they got to the finals, really. Yeah. Whereas, like, a lot of these other teams tried to, like, Secret, anyway, tried to, I don't know what the fuck they tried, but they're always in their like, own head. Like, they, like at some point, like, they, I felt like they were trying to copy OG without understanding what OG was doing. Yeah. Well, and that was, like, really weird. Yeah. But anyway, just to get back to Secret, this team needs to make roster changes. I don't know which, to be honest, because Nisha is just... So the, so the core of 
the Absor and Puppy is kind of good, actually. I think that's a really strong support duo and really solid one. And I think if you're Puppy, it's really difficult to find four player, four position player that's actually better than Yapsor right now, mm -hmm. uh, because I don't think a lot of four. four I think you can. Players. I think you can change the other two though. Um, not Nisha, obviously. I think Nisha is probably no, the best of the. No, I think course. yeah. I think I think mid one and Zai probably. I mean, that's it's the your thing, right? it's your it's your choice if you want to uh, change out Zai or not. Like, yeah, those are the two I'd look at. And and the thing is with Zai is it's not even. I mean, supposedly he chose to leave himself anyway. I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, Zai, but, um, straight up Zai is very. Like, I, I usually don't believe that shit. But like, Zai literally does this all all the time. Oh, yeah. I'm he leaving makes, to play makes, school. Yeah. I'm leaving to do this. Yeah. I'm leaving to do that. Like, he just does it um, all the time. Well, anyway, I think I think it would also free them up to maybe sort of, like, change their direction as a team in terms of, like, how they want to approach the game. Um, this is why, I mean, this is... I think them, them getting rid of Zai would be similar to... Uh, Liquid getting rid of Matoma Man, not so much because they don't like, or he's not a good player, or maybe he doesn't necessarily fit the team, but because they would need, they would want to change up how they play, and Zai removing Zai would allow them to do that. And I think, um, I, I, but also removing mid one, obviously. Yeah, I think, I, I think mid one is the first one. Like after watching Liquid do. with Wii, I'm I'm starting to think like you might need to remove like two people if you want to like tr drastically change it. Oh, for sure. Um, Liquid. Oh, or you're talking about Liquid, right? Well, liquid, like secret and liquid, like basically, oh, like, yeah. you can't just remove. I'm not, I'm not certain, like just removing one will necessarily change the color, color of secret, unless you're like, unless you put in somebody really weird, like 33 or something. Yeah, I think, uh, ironically, ironically, and I was criticized. I, I kind of criticized the 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 we have pickup by liquid, but I can't really think of many people that could have shaken up liquid's playstyle this much. With just one per, like in just one roster change, right? Yeah, but like, so I, I still think, like, I think it's pretty limited. Oh, for sure. I 100% agree. They should, like, I think a lot of people will look at this TI run and be like, oh, Liquid is so good, Liquid so strong. No, fuck that. You need to look at their group stage to actually see the future of this team. No, you, like that. No, like, that, if you look at their fucking run, the run is so similar to their fucking stupid. Um, I, I have to go check it. It's like there was one run they had with a Matumba Man. Where like basically they just clutched their way from like the bottom to the top and made it to the finals. You know, it was like during the DPC season, it was um, Paris, right? And that was like the moment where I thought in my mind they have to fucking change again. All right, yeah. right? Because like basically that was like the best case scenario. Like you literally had ten out of ten in every fucking player, and yeah. this is like the farthest you can get. It's like this is a very similar run. Yeah. No, you, no, absolutely. And they, I, I mean, I trust that Kuro and Liquid are smart enough to realize that this roster has is long past its expiration date. Like they extended it. Like they, you like know, they they've you never know, this bullshit. Like, come on, man, you can't go much further than this. You know how sometimes when you have like yogurt in, in your fridge and you don't know if it's like ex expired, you like open it, you smell a little bit, maybe you even taste it if you're really not sure because you know when you taste it, it's like, hmm, does it really taste? Is it is it really expired? And then, yeah, it's really expired. And then you go to the bathroom, you throw up, whatever. This is liquid right now. Like, you better throw up and you better remove, like, two players of this roster. Like, you had, you had a band-aid for this TI. A band-aid on a huge, huge fucking wound. So this this, this roster needs some changing. And, it, and, and I think liquid is a good example of, like, teams don't need to, need to make change just because a player is bad. Teams need to make change because they need change. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't even, I, I wouldn't even say any of these players are bad. I think any of these players could find a home in a tier one team right away again. Yeah, I think they, they would change drastically. Like, uh, like this is t like I always, always compared this liquid to Virtus Pro because the longevity is like pretty similar. Even if it's like yeah. it's like an year or two years less than Virtus Pro, I'm not sure about the time. But no, wait, team, this team liquid roster has been together longer than Virtus Pro. The f five man roster? I'm talking about the Matumba man one. Yeah, no, it hasn't. Uh, we're, I'm, I mean, Virtus Pro from CS:GO. Oh yeah. Oh sorry. Like the four, the basically the presidential term, like the four years. Oh, yeah. All right. No, no, you're right. I thought you were mentioning. I thought yeah. You were talking about no, no. It, like okay, in my mind, I always compare this liquid to that Virtus Pro from CS:GO, not Virtus Pro right, from right. Dota. Because right, right. obviously, this liquid is the longest fucking five man roster ever, and then this, this these four players specifically have been together for a long time. And like the the fundamental problem with that Virtus Pro and this Liquid is like Virtus Pro that CS:GO Virtus Pro like ran out of ideas at the end. Like they could you think they could only rotate ro roles so many times. They could only learn new maps so many times. And then the day when Neo and Taz decided, hey, we're kind of done 
reinventing all these tactics. Snacks, you want to take a turn? It's like, sure. And then they fucking ruined everything, right? That's kind of how that Vertispo imploded. But in Liquid's case, like, Kuroki can never say, I'm fucking tired. I don't want to draft. I don't want to study nope. anymore. Can somebody else do it? Like, no. Kuroki can never say that shit. But Kuroki's just one man. He can't, like, keep reinventing the wheel. And I don't even think he was reinventing the wheel by the end. Like, not really. No. Right? And and that's kind of that's kind of the beauty in Dota. Like you don't have to necessarily reinvent the re, reinvent the wheel, but at the same time you definitely need like fresh, a fresh sort of like uh, approach. Mm -hmm. um, like this is why again this is why this team needs to change, right? Yeah. Not because not because they lack tactics or anything. It's just because, I mean, some things you just can learn or relearn, and that's like, that's when you have to do a change. Yeah, basically, like my my problem is like, um, how do I explain this? Okay, I'll, I'll explain it like this, right? Like, if if you ever talk to somebody, like, about, like, um, learning something... I, I'll, I'll put it this way. Like, I think one of the biggest fallacies I've ever heard of is, like... Uh, in, like, a 1v1 game like StarCraft. One of the biggest fallacies I've ever heard of is, like, I don't know why this player doesn't learn how to cheese. Or I don't know why this player doesn't know how to... Never takes time to learn how to play a macro game. Or, like, in Dota, it'd be like, I don't know why this guy doesn't learn how to play hero, new, new, new heroes or whatever. Right. And, like, I think there's actually a fundamental, like, cap or limit to how far you can actually go for every single player. And same thing goes for teams. And I think Liquid hit their limit a long time ago. So, I was like, they, it doesn't matter how many more hours you put into it. Like, they, they can't, like, they've already explored every fucking option. It's yep, just time for I a change. Agree. And it's time for a change, and... And I mean, I'm super excited for this change because again, a lot of these players are really, really good, and I think we're long overdue for these big, big shuffles, man. Like again, the, this TI, it was just a lot of rosters just hitting that mark finally, where they had to give up and where they had to, you know, mm -hmm. better fucking retire or better fucking shuffle. And yeah, now we're gonna see fresh new blood. And uh, we skipped this team, but like in my heart, they're second uh, PSG LGD. And when I say in my heart, I basically mean this is literally the only team that could have given us good finals, but sadly, yeah. it was not meant to I be. I agree. I agree. Um, but I think I think them not making the finals, though, is sort of like also... I don't know if it's to... good or not, but okay, keep going. No, no to, me, to me, it's testament to the fact that they didn't necessarily improve from last year either. No, they um, didn't. Like, yeah, you stuck together as a team. I guess maybe at like this break for like two months, but I don't count that. Um, yeah, you stuck together as a team, but did you actually learn anything, or did you actually become a better team from last season? Like that—that's—that's that's always my question. Whenever teams stick together or decide to stay together, like, do you actually have the potential to be better than what you are right now, or do you just stay together out of convenience sake? Like, are you are you satisfied with maybe winning a major, maybe placing second here, but that's it? Like, are you satisfied with that? And that, this is why every time teams decide to stay together, I always get a little bit angry, actually, because to me, it's all almost almost the idea of um, stagnation and them being satisfied and like just not like, having necessarily like an absolute hunger approach. Yeah. Either either but, they're, they're like so blinded to like, yeah, we oh, will yeah. surely, we will surely exactly. break all of history. <laughs> like, exactly. listen, the only team that's ever done that was Wings, technically. And like, and, Wings obviously couldn't do it for more than like two months. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Like, do, are you, do you really believe that you're going to be the first team that sticks together after this and going to somehow magically revert like turn around turn things around i got to be with you it'd be so much better than you were last year because psg at ti8 was a really god team like a really really good team any probably other, one of the best like teams let's, we've seen at, let's at be NTI. honest like if if i threw that team into any other year they probably they might have been able to win Ab absolutely 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 one of the best performances at any at any ti one of the best teams at any ti but are you really going to tell me you're going to become better or at the, like, no, 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 no. At the very least, stay at that same level, which, by the way, is, it's insane to assume that you can stay at the same level that you performed at one tournament, at TI most notably, or even become better. And to me, that was just never, that was never part of the happen. equation. That was never going to happen, uh, especially considering how they lost the finals too. I think we talked about this at length, but there was some big throwing for some big carries. Um, and Shout out to Stabai Mori Ame, yes. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm, not gonna, like, I'm not gonna walk around that. Come on, man. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. And the question is then: I, Is he really gonna become like a significantly better carry that like learned from his mistake? Maybe, but is that gonna be enough? I mean, I don't necessarily think he got any better. I, I don't think the team got any better. I, if anything, I think they got worse. Like this yeah, season like, was kind of like whatever. Like, from basically, them. this TI woke them up, and this is as close yeah. as they've ever been to that to like the TI eight form they had. Absolutely. 
And the funny thing, or the the thing is in China, right? As we've learned now, like the Chinese scene is killing itself by having these huge buyouts, making it almost impossible to like change rosters or like mm-hmm. change players. I kind of get that they then decided to stick together because it was probably going to be more of a hassle to get new players. But at the same time, like then you have to as- expect that this is going to be your season. What what was the best performance this season? The best performance was literally this third. third it, place, it was this it? Ti third. Yeah. And I guess a third at ESL one Birmingham. No, it's wow. definitely this Con- TI then. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. Con fucking grats, really. Con fucking grats. Like I, I, it's just a shut. I, I'm so upset with them because it's just such a shame considering the potential on each position. Um, and again, FY is just I don't know. I don't know how you can play two TIs as a god, literally as a god. Like he, I, I, three I don't TIs. Think Come on, he made the finals before. Well, I don't know about the two TIs in a row, right? Two yeah. TIs in a row. How do you play two TIs in a row this good? I, well, who am I? What, what am I talking about? We're going to talk about OG, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, outside of OG, how do you play two TIs this well in a row and then not... Win? I mean, it's way more tragic for FY. Like, come on, man. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. <laughs> no, but, but I'm, I'm saying, like, has anybody ever performed this well twice in a row and then not won? Like outside, outside of like outside of OG, like F Y F Y might be the highest performing TI player of all time. I, yeah, absolutely. He, I mean, and he's he made never won a TI. Yeah. Like I, I think I think he's a better I think he's a better TI player than Smale. Smale's won before. Like I think he's better TI player yeah. than like any of the Alliance guys. They all yeah. won. Like come on, man. Oh, for sure. And, and take Navi with him too. Navi's completely overrated in that regard too. Yeah. Um, but like F Y, I don't know. Like he he's. Again, and this is why I, you know, I tweeted out like, if only there was a MVP award, like, yeah, if I would have won it twice, not that that would have done him any good. What we'll probably would made him more depressed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly, at least he didn't play second again, huh? I don't know, man. It, I, I think like it probably would have been better for his mental state. He got third this time because, like, I, I think there's like some studies like basically in Olympics, oh, third is better than second. Yeah. But like, I'll, I'll be honest, I think it's probably worse for the fans just because. That finals was not a good, was not a fun finals to watch. <laughs> At the same time, though, like I, I do agree with you. Though I, my suspicion is that LG would have given us a better, more competitive finals, but odds are OG would have crushed them. Too. No, I, I don't, I don't think OG would have crushed. Like here's, here's the thing about PSG LGD, they're every single time they play OG, always close. Specific, we're talking about TIs, obviously, always close. Obviously, but the thing is, is like because they're like. The way their styles and the way their individuals work out, it'll always be a close game. But because it's specifically a TI, it will all, almost always revert to one of two things: either you get in, you get into this weird draft situation where like fuck like fucking Seb pulls out like a hand of God moment, is like fucking axe, right? And then you lose, or you get into this weird, really hard clutch moment, and then guess what? OG is way clutcher than you will ever be, like. But outside of that, they were actually like very, very close. So I think it would have been a close finals, but I think OG would have definitely won. Like, I, like how many times did we have to see OG? Like, this is like this is like a best of twenty one or some bullshit at this point. But like, OG will always win. But here's the thing: this might be the most one sided, one of the most one sided rivalries. But every series is fucking close, isn't it? So close, yeah. No, you're right. But man, yeah, no, uh, LGD, I feel for them. But uh, once again. On the chopping block, they go. They need some roster changes. All of China needs some. Like I think, GM roster changes. I think basically China needs to figure out need, needs a really good GM because I think like their their godly like light up is probably gonna be like one or two years out from now just because of the buyout situation. So they need I mean, a guy who like figures this shit out. The the thing is like I think there's actually a lot of really really good GMs coaches whoever is in charge of rosters. Um, but it's just all... the problem. The problem is that they like there's so many like politics at like a higher level that they oh, can't really contest that's true. with. Right, like the whole like, there's there's like a lot of there's a lot of rivalries between these orgs too. Then there's like the whole, I mean, the fact that they all think they can't make money unless they sell players for like two million dollars or whatever, mm-hmm. which in China is then even like two times bigger because of you know how currencies work. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I don't know. I I think China has a huge fundamental problem right now in esports in general that they that they need to figure out. Well, Dota, the Dota scene anyway, because mm-hmm. well. But that's yeah. and the funny thing is that's that's actually what prompts them to invest so heavily in youth program because youth is free, right? I mean, like, it was pick, it, can, it, it used to be freer, well, but then the sister yeah. teams got destroyed. I know, but it, it kind it technically is free in a sense. So, 
I, I think that's that's what we're gonna see. We're gonna, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a lot of youngsters next season, which honestly I'm not even against. Like I think if that's if that's a bad thing, that sure. I mean, listen, man. Like at the, at this point, all of China is just like waiting, waiting, waiting. Like I think FY is gonna go down like burning, dude. I think he's literally gonna be oh, like. I really hope. Like. He doesn't. Like, think, remember when Burning went out? Everybody, like, literally said he's probably the greatest of all time. But he's never won yeah. TI. I think that's literally yeah. what's going to happen to FY. Greatest support yeah. of all time. Never going to win TI. Fuck me, dude. Like, isn't that fucking depressing? Like, your it's two greatest so players of all time, like... It's so depressing. Technic, like, I, I I don't know if I'll put them one and two or whatever, but, like, they'd definitely be in my top five. <laughs> oh, for sure. Um, I think... It's always so difficult, especially with Burning, because I think his greatest time was actually in Dota. It was 1, actually in Dota One, Dota. obviously, but like um, you, you know what you know what I mean, like no, for sure. Ex- ex- yeah. It's gonna be way more depressing with FY, because like here's the thing: Dota Two fans didn't necessarily see like Burning's like Apex, right? They definitely saw FYs. They saw it, like two or three times at this point. No, this guy still can't win. <laughs> oh, all right. Anyway, want to talk about OG? All right. So the greatest miracle men of all miracle men to have ever lived. Uh, I, I feel like all logic goes out the window when you talk about OG because mm. this team just defies history and defies logic. I mean, I think I think there are some er, there are some notice, not, uh, notable things to talk about this team. Oh, for sure. I guess um, first, how do I explain it? I guess when I talked to Seb, right, like he was always very he was always very specific about the balance of the team. And like fund- the fundamental conditions in which a team succeeds, I want to be that by that is like th- like I think there's he basically outlined like three or four different ways teams a team kind of needs to succeed overall. They need a very strong, obviously need, need very good Dota knowledge and drafting whatever they all, they obviously have that with a no tail Seb, right? They need good team synergy. They need to work together. They need to work together well on the Dota side, and then they need a certain emotional condition emotional conditions where everything click, clicks together and they become greater than their sum of the parts. And then like the fifth condition is like all that shit comes together and then you have like really good intuition at the moment. That's kind of right. how he explained it to me at the time or through multiple different answers. That's kind of like the conclusion I came about his system or whatever. And when I've seen OG in this past year, obviously with different lineups and I saw OG in the, past, in the, in the year before that and I saw them at TI 8, saw them at TI 9, all these conditions only happen at TI. Yeah, pretty much. Because, like, the emotional aspect, obviously, like, fucking revenge, the biggest tournament of all time, but they, here's, like, here's the thing, right? Uh, we, you know how I always say, like, TI is a pressure cooker? Like, it's, like, the ultimate, is the ultimate sort of, like, uh, crucible for these players. Or at least that's how right. I write it. If you actually look at OG's run last year, that's actually, like, a TI of TIs. As in, like... Yeah. That, that that run was like so unlikely to happen and there was so much bullshit behind it. It wasn't just it wasn't just like a normal TI, it was like all that emotional shit. It was like them versus no tail, them versus E. G. them picking a random picking yeah. a rookie, Anna returning from support back to back to uh making a change, making three role changes, four role changes, whatever, all this shit, right? And that was so that was so uh in terms of pressure and everything, that was so hard for them. That this TI probably like it probably felt like a walk in the park to be honest. Honestly, I that's that's how I saw it this year too. I think, I think they had all the all they had the pre, the pressure of pressure that you could ever think of last year, and that re, that was released after they won the Aegis, and ever since then they've been on like cloud nine. They've been literally the like nothing can phase them right now. Like the way they played this tournament, it felt like they didn't. They they knew they were gonna win and they didn't care about anything else and they never wavered. They had a lot of fun. They and I mean, I think part of that I alluded to it earlier. I think part of this sort of like approach is also what allowed Liquid to go as far as they did. Yeah, very similar. Um, I think Liquid had a very similar approach. Most, but they're just like less clutch and and I they're, think they're less they're, they're less, less clutch, clutch and, and I think their drafts were I mean not the drafts but like their knowledge was worse. I was about to say, I think they they had a lot of going for them. What what uh, OG had, like you know, they have Very the team synergy, the coordination, the trust in each other te- as teammates, the ability sort of to play under pressures, like high, the ability really, to really play high. exactly. But what was the big difference and what showed in the finals is the understanding of Dota right now at this level right now, and like sort of like 
how how, how the meta works, but also how um, how how to draft, I guess, right now in this meta. Like, as well. I, I, I'll put I'll put it this way: I think Liquid ran out, ran out straight up ran out of gimmicks against OG. Mm-hmm. Like they used all the gimmicks before then, and they're like, "What do we have left?" We don't really have anything and, left. And, and, I mean, and that's also one of the reasons why OG was so strong is because they didn't have like this wasn't a gimmick. They, they didn't have yeah, gimmicks. Like, and, they, they had just they just they just play their own fucking Dota. No, um, like the, like the problem the problem with um the problem like I I guess I'll, I'll I'll narrow down OG's victory to two things, and I think one is more important than the other. But I think the two things is um the Dota knowledge, and the second thing is their clutch. And I think the clutch is more important than the other stuff because I think if you look at um, all of Dota history, if you look at and if you look at this TI in particular, the clutchest teams were the most successful at TI. Oh, well, for sure, for sure. Right? Like I, I just think they play closest to the best game. And in OG's case, they actually play. I think they play way above their game. I say that even though I've technically never really seen them at the top of their game in the regular season because Anna like fucking returns to Valhalla every every year. And, and she, I mean the thing is the thing is like. We don't even need to. F- we don't even need to see that, right? Like it, them during the season, because that's ultimately what doesn't even matter. Like if they can perform this time, this way at every TI, then, I mean, I mean, it doesn't fucking matter how they perform in this. I, 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 I get, what, I get what you mean though. I get what you mean though, and like, I, I do think that they are like you know how we talked about, um, um, EG not being better than the sum of the parts, like. OG is 100% better than the sum of the parts. But only like, at TI. Lot, like I said, it only connects at TI. Only at TI, right. And, and a lot of these players probably wouldn't work in other teams. Um, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, mm-hmm. um, I, I just a point that I wanted to try to make. To me, OG is the most complete TI winner we've had yet. I feel like every other TI winner, um, and I say this knowing full well that we've had Alliance, for example, um, but I think they're like a step or two above what Alliance achieved at TI. Um, because Alliance at the time, and I think this is Alliance always gets referenced as the, t- as the team, or maybe as the only team that goes into TI as a favorite, and that still won it, because they were so ahead of the curve, and they they basically did things that nobody even thought of, right? And they had such strong team cohesion on top of it that even though you knew what they were going to do, you couldn't counter it. like Because you could have figured out Alliance step by step, but you still couldn't counter it because they executed it so almost perfectly. Mm-hmm. And not only does OG have that, they have sort of like the the mentality, the sort of like the fluidity that Wings sort of like had in their in their in their win. They mm-hmm. had the they had the they had the strategic sort of like depth depth that Newbie actually had at TI4. Newbie, I, the, the, nobody talks about TI4, but Newbie strategically was incredibly strong in the TI. Like they literally t- tore their enemies apart, and they literally were the only team to counter VG Gaming that tournament. Mm-hmm. And that's like OG to me is just like combined so many of the strength that made other TI winners even possible. But other TI winners to me only had like a couple of these things, right? They only like, oh, I was really good at this. I was like, Wings was just like crazy. Wings was just crazy. Mm. Wings were like, a lot. like basically, Wings is kind of like Nietzsche, kind of like just broke all the old paradigms. Like <laughs> let's burn, let's burn it all. Like everything yeah. you know about Dota is technically wrong. And- and I feel like, and I feel like OG in, in, uh, sort of like has all of these things together. Like they are the most perfect TI winner we've had, we've had thus far. I kind of think it's honestly scary how they won TI this easily, because I don't think anybody else won it this easily. If if that makes any sense. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like I think, I think that's true. Like I'm trying to, like I'm running through my mind. I don't think anybody won it this easily. Um, because like he, the only time OG was even close to like danger was PSG LGD, and all, yeah. and, and we both know like when that gets to the clutch situation, OG is gonna win like a hundred percent of the time. It it honestly never felt really like their their wins like them advancing was ever in danger, mm-hmm. right? Um, again, like you said, yeah, LGD was definitely came closest to to sort of like um, knocking them down, but even that never felt like they were actually really in danger. Yeah. Um, and th- that's kind of, I mean, it's both scary, but also beautiful because they are playing some goddamn Dota. I think the, the, the Dota knowledge that you referenced, I think, is really impressive to me in this particular team because it goes beyond just understanding the meta. It goes beyond just understanding, so like, hero, how they interact with one another. It's, it's It almost feels like if if time slowed down and Seb was allowed to do individual calculations, all right, this spell is going to hit for 200 damage, but then I have 20% magic resist on top of the 10% damage resistance, and then I have this amount of heal, 
Like it almost feels like they have the extra amount of time to do all of these calculations in every in single interaction. No, it's like intuitive for them though. Like, I know, and that's a, and that's a crazy thing, right? They, it's so intuitive to them to to build certain items that other people don't even think about. But then if you do the math, it's like, hey, this is probably the most efficient way to play Dota. And to them, it's just almost I, second nature. Yeah, like, I th- like I, I asked Seb this, like whether he thought, because like when we were talking, he's like, um, this was obviously last year. Also, I should point out, like it kind of annoys me. Like apparently like Seb was on some kind of French esports show and then when he was there on there, he was talking about they were talking about Fortnite for some reason. Like, if you have like, if you literally have like one of the greatest minds of like any esports, you should probably talk to them about their fucking game. Just throwing that out there, but ignore no, that. for sure. But unfortunately, especially mainstream press, to them, they don't really care about that. It's just like, oh, hey, you play video games for a living, isn't that like Fortnite? You know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But anyway, like, um, when I talked to when I asked him, like, basically, like, because. The line of questioning was like he was he was kept talking about intuition. I asked him whether he thought intuition was like the ultimate answer, and he basically said he basically said yeah it was. Um, and then he went on to explain what the fuck he thought intuition was because that's like a loaded term or whatever. But basically, that's if you look at um, if you just look at the way things play out, it feels like they come up like this is gonna sound this is gonna sound like a weird backdoor way to say it's technically clutch is the most important answer, but like basically. If you think about um, everything that happened to them, right? Because they 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 don't have any pressure anymore. They they just freely think about Dota. Like they don't think about any of the other bullshit, right? They don't think about the pressure. They don't think about winning. They don't think about the Aegis because they already won one. They don't think about how they really want to win. They just think about what is the best answer right now. And because they've already done all the, uh, because they're like they, none of them have fear anymore of Ti. Like this Ti is like a cakewalk for them. They, when they come up with an answer, they're like, "Oh, I think this works." The other four are like, "Okay, let's go with it." Like, I think that's, I think that's literally how they came up with the wisp pick, right? Was like, yeah, like, like and, and was looking, is like, I think you, I think we pick wisp here. It's like, okay, like, never practice no, it. No, no, no discussion. Know? Like, yeah. just go do it. And then I, I think, I, I was in like the, was it the fourth game against Liquid? Yeah, I think it was the fourth game against Liquid. Like they went fifth, fifth pick gyro, but obviously like the the whole reason they went with gyro was like. Oh, we get Defusal Blade. Well, their only answer is like fucking Bristleback squills as damage, but if he has no mana, it doesn't matter, does it? Like yeah. that's how they win, right? Like for whatever reason, like they can, th- this particular five can access that access that fucking um, Akashic records of all of Dota knowledge, right? Like the Wings did for like those two months or whatever. And I think like the way you described OG is very similar to how Seb described Wings, like and, just raw and- Dota knowledge. And I think this is absolutely. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is where they draw a lot of inspiration from. Maybe not even consciously. No, I don't, I don't think it's think, conscious. Yeah. Like, because uh, first off, wings is wings. They re- they don't have a playbook. That's why they can't yeah, replicate it. That's true. Um, and and this is why I, I mean, in hindsight, what happened to them with like, with like fly and S four, it's the best thing that could have happened to them. It Obviously. freed them up so much. It freed them up so much. I will say though that if they hadn't won that TI, if we wouldn't be talking about i mean obviously it's kind of i mean yeah say, right? no even obviously here's the thing i actually think we'd be talking about them like this just because like the only other team that could beat them at that ti was lgd right so like i think they'd still I, right. that would have been a fucking crazy run either way but like i know what you mean but like it, it just feels so weird because after that win it, it it and ever since i think you could tell that there's a certain certain aura around this team of like we give no fuck and but we're still gonna make you our bitch um, even in even in the regular season when they still competed, um, it felt like they didn't even care that they weren't really as good as they were at TI, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they were like, whatever, we're still going to play our own game. They, and they kept playing their own game. Um, it's but Obviously, it, like, not everything was connecting. Like, here's the thing. Like, I think o- only, only at TI, like, like, I agree with you. Like, if we're just looking at TI in isolation, they're probably the most complete team we've ever seen. Yeah. But if we're looking at we're looking at it in context of like the entire scene. Like, I don't think they're like close to like the, no, absolutely I don't think not. they're close no, at all to like the most complete team we've ever I seen. I mean, we could point at teams that lost at this TI that have probably had. They're uh, more complete than they are. Like secret yeah. probably is Virtus yeah. pro liquid, not this liquid, but like yeah. previous liquid. No, um, like, but it's, it's kind of scary that they, that they can approach TI with like such a, such a calm mind. Whereas whenever we go into TI and talk about teams at TI, we always have to add that addendum of like, but how they're going to perform a TI. What you're what, like, but now we're going to go into every TI with OG like 
fuck, OG is, OG ATI is super scary, right? Yeah. Um, and I think the only other team where I could feasibly, and maybe this is maybe a little bit too early because we don't even know the roster yet, where I could feasibly say it could maybe be the same as Liquid. Liquid to me is the only other team that has proven right now or in the recent times that TI pressure doesn't get to them. No, dude, um, like this, I'll be honest with you, this Liquid, like Li Liquid on paper has sh is second here. Liquid like my eyes, my fucking eyes. Like if if I don't like my my eyes are always lying to me. But like if I if I look at the games I, in my mind, I'm thinking if you take away like all the pressure problems, like I think they lose TNC. I think they do. Like, but obviously, like this fucking liquid is so goddamn clutch. It's disgusting. But, but there's not, not always not as clutch as OG, and that's also why I think like clutchness is like the most important factor of TI actually, because I think clutch is like. Going back a second, I think Clutch just actually opens up all, all the doors. Like, oh, if you're sure. not afraid of losing and you're only trying to think of of what's the best answer, like, you're going to have more answers than anybody else. And I think, like, even though I said Liquid is super Clutch, they were not, they were not, they weren't Clutch at all in the finals. In the draft really or, or in oh, the yeah. play. That's, that's, that's and terrible. I think that's, like, the difference between them and OG is, like, OG in the draft were, like, they were still OG. And the Liquid in the draft was, like, they ran out of gimmicks. They weren't. And, like, my problem was, like, Liquid didn't necessarily try to challenge them. Like, like when you look at the PSG LGD draft, I think they were trying to challenge, like, OG. Like, okay, what if you do... What if we take away this pick? What if we challenge this pick? What if we do this, right? right? right. I didn't see the same thing in Liquid. I felt like they tried right. to avoid Liquid, their Liquid tried to Yeah, Liquid tried to do play a whole different game, basically. Yeah, and then the only time they tried to directly challenge OG was in the fourth game against, like, like fuck it. We, if we want to win, we have to, like, break IO. Yeah. And then they mm -hmm. kind of break aisles because of that. By that point, it was too late. Super wrong approach, by the way. You always try it in the first game. Yeah, like here, like I think, like I don't think Seeker could have won, but I think Puppy Puppy's like pro approach would have been better than Croaky's. Puppy would have Puppy would have let against IO OG twice. Yeah, he would. would have let IO no, he would have he would have IO three times. He would have got he might have gone yeah. O three, but he would have been like fuck you. I, I, it's either my way or the highway. Like yeah. Like that's like no, that's, that's that's very fair. That's very fair. But ironically speaking, like I remember, like I, I was comparing Crokey and Puppy. Like obviously, Crokey is more of like a team play guy, uh, more of a guy who thinks team play is the way to win. And to be up, to be fair, outside of OG, proven correct again, fucking clutch as hell. So yep. I mean, that's just the differences in their approach, maybe. But yeah, just to just get back to OG, um, super super scary team at a ti because i don't see them stopping this anytime soon either unless anna decides to really no it isn't he on hi hi hiatus, hiatus i mean again? yeah for like for like half a year or whatever i don't mean probably half the team all right here's the thing him. there's no i don't want to say this because obviously it's jinxing it but here's the thing man like you can't do that forever Shao cannot go back to his fucking log cabin and return like full form every single time that only happened like four or five times anna cannot do this forever um we shall see yeah we shall see like um eventually it's so, like i used to believe like maybe how just like one day turn no man how's not gonna come back and be as good as he once was it's it's over like listen anna he will he probably has maybe one or two more like this but it's probably not gonna be as fucking great like i don't i can't believe that man come on man i, I kind of want to see it happen i really want to see it happen um and i and i'm kind of i'm almost glad that that anna is sort of like doing this again because it kind of also, to me, it also kind of shows the flaw in in the scene in a way. It's, it I, shows I'm, a huge I'm a, flaw. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the TI. Don't get me wrong, but the fact that you can sit out like two thirds of the year and still take home the biggest prize of the of you the know, year, it's, it's just it's just kind of crazy to me. Um, and then again, you know, it's it's also I mean, super unlikely that anybody can do this outside of OG right now. Anyway, yeah. Um, um I yeah. guess one, one last thing I'll add is like. I think I I know I know I, I know you were like you were critical of Seb, but I think I think it's like as a player, I was an individual player, but I think like I think at this point like OG and I and I know both of us are like you should you should probably fucking change rosters or whatever like fuck it, you've already won two times. Let's just let's just no. keep, let's just run again, run it again, just, just run it again, dude. Like this 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 roster, 
like one like the reason why this roster works is because it is this roster. Yeah, I don't think it works like, with could, anybody you else. Could, you could you could I mean it could maybe, but we it's like we don't really know what kind of person that is yet, I feel like. I don't think we've seen that person yet and No, we wouldn't even that know person... that person exists until they put were put into this roster straight exactly, up. Exactly. Exactly. And like to me, if if you change this roster, you like, change what makes this team this team. Whereas in other teams, like you can change faces, it almost doesn't matter. But in this team, the relationships between these players matter so much. Like we, you know how not even just talk- like relationships, like fucking their draft oh. synergy, their like hero synergy is like really fucking weird. It's hero synergy, but also like the the, the un- like this unconditional trust that you yeah, have. Yeah, true. Like, like, like I said, like the intuition team, things. Like, like how many teams yeah. are gonna be like, yeah, I want to pick I. I was like, okay, no questions asked. Yeah, exactly. Like at first, people would discuss it. Like, are you sure? Why do you think it's worth? Like, they just pick it. Look, and with this team, like there's this me or this there was this somebody on Reddit found this from True Side Kiev Major. Um, Anna apparently said that in the video. I don't even remember it. Like, not, he wasn't I might talking. Even, I, might, like, I might even be mis mis um, mis repeating this, but well, anyway, apparently Anna during the Kiev Major was like, uh, because they lost the game. Like, what do we do now? And then Seb just just win. We just win, and then. Last year's true sight, apparently, Anna was like, oh, let's just win. Let's just win. He was the guy that just, let's just win. Like, this is the evolution of this team, right? The, the way they sort of, like, we talk, we, we've been making kind of fun about how the, the power of friendship every now and then because a lot of teams praise it or, you know, preach it, and then they don't actually live it. They kick, they kick each other at every corner, right? And OG, to a degree, is actually at fault for this, too. Like, they preach the power of friendship first. And Shout out to Fly. Like All yeah. the time. For a year and a half, I, I, I thought it was I, I thought it was bullshit the entire time. I thought yeah. it was bullshit the entire time. <laughs> and now we see that this matters so much to this team. Like I genuinely believe, if they didn't believe in each other as like friends, they couldn't pull this off. Well, here's like, the thing: like I, they they didn't have time to. Like I know what you mean, but like th- their friendship is fundamentally different from like the shit Fly was trying to pull. Well, it was like for we, sure. we played together for years. No, that friendship was born was born out of revenge. Yeah. <laughs> That friendship was born out of revenge and hatred and a last minute underdog run. <laughs> well, that and it, it almost it almost also felt like they were just sort of like they became they, they forged their sort of friendship in like the, the, the pits the dips, of like the pits of hell. Like that's not that's not normal. Like, like you can talk about power friendship all you want to this OG. It's all true. Nobody can replicate it because that yeah. all the shit that happened to make that shit happen. Nobody else can do except maybe so RTZ. Oh to somebody else oh, again it, it, it feels like some magical curse we have to like sacrifice yeah uh, the, you, you, gotta, you gotta be like of, jesus you gotta you gotta yeah. uh kill yourself and resurrect yourself like no tail yeah. did when fly you know backstabbed him and <laughs> and that's 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 why i think these ti runs are so also so like so different because you know, last year was all about revenge, and you you could see all those like his face like so mad, and like he wanted to kill somebody, and like you know, this TI he went on stage laughing. He had all those papers in his hand to just joke around. They 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 couldn't again, and I, I said this before, but I cannot stop repeating this. They knew they were going to win this TI from the moment they got there, and that's the scary part about this OG. Yeah, like, like you, because yeah. because what's stopping them? It, it, they didn't rely on a meta this season. They didn't rely on. Well, well I mean, that, that's a normal. that's ignoring the season. They barely played it. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's yeah. I, I, I will say. I will say like um. After that, we. I, I will say like there's a lot of things you can break down about OG. Um, one of the weird, one of the things like that's less talked about is I think, No Tail is a five. Like I I I've, I put him as like the third best five of this year. But I think like um, cause I I think he's just so fucking weird. They have so many weird picks, and I think like it only. I'm, I'm not sure if it, w- it would work on any other team, but it works really well for this team. It's so funny the way the way some of these players play. No, most notably to me, Seb and No Tail. It all it's almost like you can feel that they actually didn't use to play these positions necessarily, like the, because the way they play it feels unorthodox in a way where they. They know exactly what the other positions need from them. They know exactly how the other players are going to play around them. Because no tell, you know, well, he used to be a mid laner and then he played four position, like flashy action and like super, super important key, uh, key player, uh, key heroes in, in, in the games. Seb used to be support. He used to sort of like vision and uh, he used to sort of like uh, see the game from a support mid, position. They carry. They played right. <laughs> they played uh, all of them. Basically, all of them, right? But. Like it feels like, and, and I think this is what you can tell about these players that they know more than just their role. Like they play this game beyond just their role, 
-hmm. And this is what I love about this team. It's yep. the way they play Dota is just so unconventional in a lot of ways because they, they, they transcend almost like the roles in a lot of ways too. Like I mean, mm -hmm. I mean Jerex obviously is Jerex. You know, he just does what the, whatever the fuck he wants. But like Anna and Anna and um, Thompson have such fluidity in their roles as well because sometimes Anna is going to be the hot carry. Sometimes Thompson is going to be the hot carry. You I know, mean, it's like it's less so with those two, I think, because I think well, it's pretty similar across the board. For most That's teams, true. where like the, with the two cores, but like I, I agree with like Seb and No Tail, like they're so weird. Like, oh. like if if I if somebody asked me like, who do you think are like the best off laners in the world? Like I don't think I'd put Seb on my list, but like if you ask me like, who do I think is like the best role player? I think I might like I think Seb definitely be on my list, and that's like a no, very sure. weird caveat. Sure. And I mean, outside of maybe Ana and Jerex, I don't think I would put any of them in the, in a top five list of like no you can't even put on he only played no, he only played Anna, one yeah. tournament that's like bullshit you can't just or show up one tournament, tournament and be the best i know i know Shout. i know i know <laughs> but that, and that's the thing right like again we, we talk about how they are so much bigger than some of their parts they're I mean, way bigger than the, team. some they're that's, way bigger than like individual parts like that's what makes this team so unique and i think um and, that that's yeah. never going to be replicated yeah probably not like i didn't i didn't think they could replicate it but here we are talking about it no. so yeah Shout out to those guys. I think, yeah, I, think, I, I, I just think like they, when it comes to TI, like they, just the clutchest and they look deepest, the deepest into their own like Dota knowledge compared to everybody else. I think like, especially this TI, like I feel, I feel like Puppy ran out of ideas. Kuroki ran out of ideas. PBD obviously didn't even get out of the group stage. Like nobody could match them. Yeah. Again, I think a lot of these rosters are long overdue for big changes. <laughs> Um, so I'm interested to see who's going to play OG in the finals next year. <laughs> uh, hopefully in the FY team. Hopefully not this specific FY team. <laughs> yikes, 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 yikes. We'll see. That's it, man. It's, it's been done. But, like, yeah, shout out to my boy FY. Never, never win, but still one of the greats. All right, let's go do um, CSGO Major, Major. The, other, the other big tournament of the year. Or I guess... In, but in CSGO, this happens twice a year, so it's not as... Um, yeah, but, you know. It's it's pretty fucking big, right? So how much of, it just, of this did you actually get to watch? I, 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 mean, I wasn't sure. I wouldn't say most of it. I didn't... Uh, ironically, I didn't actually... The, the stage where I got to watch the least was the, Le the Legend stage, even though it was one of the best Legend stages that okay. we've ever had. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I mean, I caught a lot of the big m matches, even in the even in the Legend stage, so... All right, so um, let's go ahead and skip the challenger stage. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything that interesting beyond like Furia losing, but I think that's that was always potentially possible with them. Yep. Let's see here, legend stage. We didn't go. You didn't. You didn't go over it too much. Was let's see here. Was was there anybody anybody of the eliminated teams you wanted me to talk about or you wanted to talk about? Um, no. I mean, um, I think especially in the legend stage. I mean, outside of I guess. Avangar and uh well, I think Avangar, I mean yeah. I mean Avangar was sort of like the, the, the big outlier right for everybody. Um to, honestly I kind of expected some of the legends or the the, the, the older legends to, to not make it through. Phase M I R. Yeah, phase phase M I B R and I P to me were all three of them were not like Yeah, I mean M I B R obviously was playing with a fucking coach. And yeah. he had fucking um, problems up the wazoo. And um, phase phase I, I mean phase was always declining. Yeah. Like how many how many times can Nico headshot his way into the into the championship stage? Come on, man, it's too much. It was too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think it about sums it up. Uh, I will say I think um, among the eliminated teams, the only one I felt like should have been in the playoffs was Mouse. Mouse, yeah. But like they fucked well, up. They fucked up their they fucked up their win uh, their game against Phase, and then. That's maybe, that's all it takes because then they I was like, about to say it just puts them in such a weird seating, um, or like in such a weird sort of like a bracket because then they you know the opponents that you face, um, I, even though they did win all of the best ones afterwards, I mean, I mean they ran Vitality. They should, they should, they should have, really yeah, they they probably should have um, should have even made it through three zero. Yeah, um, I will say this about Miles because I did watch I I did watch them I I don't I think I might have been writing something about them. But basically, their fundamental problem is their CT sides. And this problem only pops up in high-pressure situations. 
So if you look at like the EU minor, they almost got eliminated by no. They did lose the game, no chance. Almost got eliminated by Sprout. And then you, you go through like each each of the stages. Like it's always it's almost always like the CT side that breaks apart. And the reason the CT side breaks apart is because that's the individual side of the game, and their individuals are based around three young stars. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's actually very similar if you want if you want to compare them to NRG, because NRG also has a similar problem where like they're they're. With, especially with the DAPS lineup, but it's happened in the status quo lineup. Their CT side like goes to trash in high pressure situations because their young players just start start getting the jitters and then they kind of break apart. Yeah. So and it's always difficult to call when you're not on that site. Yeah. Um, but like in Maz's case, like they kind of they kind of just like got around that earlier because like Kerrigan kept calling like twelve three halves on the T side or some bullshit. Yeah. So. Like winning winning like four rounds on ct shouldn't be that difficult yeah so but i mean yeah that's but i will say they played a really fucking good game against liquid even though this wasn't like prime liquid took them to overtime twice in the uh final ah, yeah I, I, I saw that that that's that match i saw um, that, that, that one was fucking crazy that's um, that's 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 why that, you know that's one of those games where that's one of those series where the the final result like the 2 doesn't was reflect it? what what the match actually was yeah so it was like yeah, the, it was a really really good series. I think like um, I think Miles is on the rise, but I keep if saying they don't that. make a roster change. Like, he the problem with he, I think with Miles, I think they've they've already set the idea of like oh we're gonna ride these three till the end, or not to the end, but like till a good portion. But like, if rain comes if rain comes knocking, maybe you start thinking about it. I don't know. We'll see. A lot of a lot of things can break apart. A lot of things can break apart. Maybe. No, you're right. Definitely right. All right, let's go to the uh, playoffs then. So. And oh, Ents, Ents and Renegades. So. um, You you, Um, you know about Lexi B? Like basically kicked before his major happened. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, surprised. I mean, that I guess that's that's one of the surprises in the legend stage to me that they went went ahead and get went through three zero. Mm-hmm. Because of the roster problems, I just went in ahead and assumed that they were going to have problems, at least in the legend stage, um, which they, I guess they didn't. Nope. Um, and, well, then you get 2 old by Renegades. Honestly, though, Renegades fucking showed up. I mean, as much as I want to take away from Ents, which you can because they were piss poor, um, Renegades showed up. Yeah, Renegades was really good. Um, basically, as far as I can tell... Uh... Like here's here's how I think here's what happened to Renegades in the last year, right? So la- at the end of last year, they cut, they were like grinding their way up to the top, and a- Azure became a pretty good in game leader, and then the entire system made JKS very good player, Jacob like a better a better player than was before, and it culminated in like a top eight last year um, at the last major, but then they had visa issues with gratisfaction, yeah. and then that basically yeah. stopped all progression of their evolution of tactics because this is a tactical team. Yeah. Whether on the CT side or T side, and so when they had the stand-in issue, they thought in their minds, "Oh, well, we we get gratisfaction. It'll all it'll all click again." They got gratisfaction back. It stopped. It didn't click again. And then when the player break happened, I think Kassad basically said, "I realized at that moment I have to redo the entire playbook." And then he redid they they redid the entire playbook or whatever. And then here we are. I just for for their sake, I just hope that this is a trend more so than an outlier. Um, like I, I hope this is a start of a trend more so than an outlier because, I mean, that was that was an impressive major. Like this, that, was... like those performances weren't just like one-off performances. Like these performances felt like really, really strong too. Like, um, so like I think the biggest the biggest problem with the Renegades is like I think they're pretty close to the max potential, and. This game is too uh, heavily skill is is um heavily skill skewed compared to when Renegades was good the first time around at the last major. Right. Like here's the reason I thought Renegades could continue to be good last major forward before I knew about the visa issues was the AUG was in play back then. And the reason I think that's important is because I think the AUG closed the gap between positional players and skill players. Right, but now it's out. But now that it's out again, like skill is more is more of a premium on the CT side. And if you look at the skill team, more of the skill teams, Baze, NIP, Fnatic, they had shit rosters this time around. So if they if their rosters start getting back together, they start making good choices, which NIP probably won't to be unfair, I mean, but whatever. Like, 
if they do, then like I think it's gonna be hard for Renegades to keep that edge. And this doesn't just count for Renegades. Like, yeah, a lot of these teams need to look at themselves. Like, yeah, we talked about how Mouse Sports should have been top eight this major, but at the same time, if these other teams get their shit together, it's gonna be even more difficult for teams like Mouse to to, uh, to close top eight out, right? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, all right, sure, maybe this balances out with Evangor not having a miracle run at at, at a major, but. Uh, realistically speaking, we're looking at MBR phase I, uh, G2. Um, well, I guess well, I don't G2 think G2 is going to work out, but we'll, yeah. we can get back to that later. Between G2 and Vitality, one French team is always going to be in the top eight, probably. Yeah, Vitality would probably be in um, there. Um, yeah, because I, I like I think uh, I actually don't know how dangerous dangerous of an element Kiyoshima is. We'll see. Um, yeah, we'll see. But so, yeah, here, here's the difference. Like I think, least... Here's the difference between I think like um, Renegades and Mouse is like. Renegades' map pool is actually pretty narrow. Um, like if you look at their run here, a lot of it's Mirage, a lot of it's Nuke. Mirage, yeah. Actually, not Nuke. Um, they only they like upset and ends on Nuke, so I guess they can play it. But like basically, like the the maps they play is are pretty narrow. Dust two, I think, some Inferno. Whereas Mal's like one on six out of the seven maps, so I think that's the difference. And so basically, if you're making all these new rosters, Mal should still have an edge on them. At least in the short term, oh, just fair. because of the larger map pool and because Karakin can really abuse that shit. That's definitely fair. So I guess if Renegades wants to continue, it's got to come down a lot down to Kassad and Azur to keep building up their map pool again. I guess that's how I'd put it. But yeah. Um, what's next? Avangar Vitality. Avangar Vitality. Oof, they, vitality. They, uh... The chosen one became the frozen one. <laughs> uh, shout out to Skip Bayless, but no. Um, more seriously, like I, I don't know what you were, like I we I never really know what to expect from I I never knew what to expect yeah, from Zayu. Like fair. here's the thing, like um, I wrote an article about the generational shift, but like of superstars, but like I still put simple over Zayu, even though like Zayu had played way more tournament, way more games. Like I think like two or three times more games than Simple had this season, and had like better stats of better stats or like more consistent stats with that with that thought in mind but the reason i put simple over zywoo is because i saw simple perform at majors before i can't say the same for zywoo and uh here we go like i don't think zywoo was nearly as good as he was it should have been for this particular playoff i and this is this is why i i never you know when when people when 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 people discuss cs on on twitter for example and like i i rarely chime in mostly because it's like I mean, um, like I think ninety percent of my followers are Dota anyway. Yeah. Um, plus, I always, I always have this little like, I always feel a little bit weird about it. But when people were talking about all oh, the best players like in the world, like Zywoo is like you know like, I mean, hey guys, how do, how how about we let him play a major first, and then we can we can and then we can talk about um, whether or not he's the best player in the world right now. Um, I mean, it, it was valid to talk about it in terms of like, can it, like you know, come major is he going to be the I mean, best player? Like, I, I will say this: he was he was easily the second best player in the world. <laughs> I, I know, I know. Like in terms of, I, I know, I know. I'm just saying, like you know, like how how is this best player in the world actually going to perform in the biggest stage? Yeah. Um, Not like, everybody makes that jump. So exactly, and like, yeah, no, that's why. I mean, I'm, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from him because odds are, like next tournament, he's going to be like that rock star again, but. Then you have to wonder, like, is can he just not play under this certain type of pressure? Um, I, mean, but, I mean, maybe he just has to get of, used to it. Like, there aren't very many people who make maybe. the jump the first time, right? No. But outside of that, outside of that, like I mean, Ori Paparazzi, those boys took years, <laughs> literal that's years. Very, that's very, very true. They can even get it together uh, in group stages of small lands at the beginning. I remember, I remember fucking I remember. Paparazzi literally ruining online qualifiers because he was so good, he could smash everybody. But the second he went to that fucking land, he'd lose to everybody. Yeah. Yep. He was literally yeah. the worst back then. I actually hated um, him back then. IG Vitality. <laughs> Fuck that he took, he, he took spots away from other he people. Fucks, he took spots away he from did, more deserving teams. Actually. He did actually, yeah. Um, but no, but my point is like, I mean, Zywo aside, like this team still, like as a whole, is just... I mean, there's a reason why they're making roster changes, right? Yeah, I feel like they hit they, um, they hit a ceiling. I'm just surprised it was NBK because I always thought he was like a shrewd politician. But I guess the uh, Kingmaker finally got usurped. French Revolution has yep. arrived. And yep. um, Alex is playing yeah. the part of Napoleon Bonaparte, a man from the <laughs> island. 
Uh, right? Um, no, we, it's true, yeah. Yeah, we, right? Uh, we, we will see if he actually conquers Europe, but even if he does, we all know how that ends uh, pretty badly back to exile. Oof. But hey, it'll be sick. Then, and... then, then, then again, you say, he, you say he's playing the role of uh, Napoleon. I mean, at the same time, he's British. Like He has, he has experience conquering Europe. Yeah, that's true. Maybe he'll be Horatio Nelson, just die out, die on the fucking seas. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's about. I think that's about it for Vitaly. I don't, I don't think they played particularly great against Avangard. That's why I'm not really talking about this series no, in were. actual like terms of things. I will say, um, Avangard was better than I expected because I thought they were pretty bad coming into the major to the point where like I wasn't even paying attention to them. But uh, James pretty good opper even though he yeah. does save a shit ton but i mean it works sanji is like like i will actually be pissed if like a day comes where like james like kicks sanji because i'd be like you motherfucker you made this guy like save for you you made you made he, like like sanji like literally like buys him the op all the time buys i mean buys like those mp guns just to get money to drop in the op all the to time and, all the the shit. Op, and like yeah. if he kicks him i'd be so super pissed like he basically sacrificed his entire career for you for the sake of fucking James, Jesus. I'd be super pissed about that. Um, the other guy to look out for, I guess, Quacker. Like, I don't... Like, I... What's funny is, like, I looked at the stats. Like, I think Buster had the best stats um, outside of James. But I thought Quicker, Quacker, Quicker was probably Quicker, the uh, most yeah. impactful yeah. player of have no, ever had. To me as well. So. Yeah, to me, he was... I wouldn't say the most standout player because I think Jamie. I mean, like, also, but like the, when when the when the shit came down to it, it was fucking quicker. And to me, I mean, again, I I didn't even look at those stats, but to me, he was the most consistent player on that team too. Yeah. Um, again, without having actually consulted the stats, but but like, even the stats, like they don't really tell the full story. Like I think, especially no, the playoffs, also, quicker was like the man. So. It's also very true. Also, shout out uh, to Adren making another major finals. I wanted him to win it, dude. I wanted him to. That, win that it. would have been some bullshit, man. Like this man. It would. It would. It would have been. It absolutely would have been. But at the same time, I thought that was a cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's also a cool story for Astralis, you know, to be the best team in CS in CS history. Don't get me wrong. I mean, they already were the best team in CS history. I mean, yeah, but like to cement that to get like what even two more majors in a row, three, three majors in a row. Three majors. Was it? In three a row. majors? Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, come on, two two majors with two different lineups, Adren, my boy. I was hoping. Not even two different lineups, the two like the two biggest underdog lineups. Is, yeah, exactly. The two, <laughs> the two biggest underdog. As lineups. as, yeah, it, as if one wasn't right. enough. I I will say though, this one would have been less epic than the last one because last one he was the carry, and this one he's just like the support player. Like, he actually got carried. Yeah, he got carried. Like he had some smart plays. I, yeah, I, I thought I, I, he did I, things, I, but like, come on, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't close to the start. I don't even think he was like the fourth best player on the team. I think he was like the last. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So that there we go. Like, but that's uh, that's like I think it would have been so fun if he just won it, like, you know. I don't know. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, Astralis, it's also a cool story, yeah. I guess. I mean, I I I basically would have said like fucking Adren knows the fucking, like, people kept asking us, what could stop the Astralis era? It turned out to be Kazakhstan again, again. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't enough. Just do it, PGL Krakow. He had to do it again. No, have to do it again. But no, obviously he didn't. I mean, so. Berlin's close enough to Krakow, you know. So yeah. Um, next quarterfinals, NRG versus NRG. Navi. Energy was, energy was fucking fire. Surprisingly good this early. I did think they had, I mean, they had the sort of like the the ingredients, if you will, to make this roster work and to become the second. I mean, to me, it was pretty easy for them to become second best team in NA because Energy before that was already second best team in NA. Yeah, like, um, but just like didn't to, have to, to lose to, out. <laughs> to, to all, to all, also cement it, but then also even maybe even challenge a liquid. Um, in surprising. in a way, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was definitely surprising to see it this early. Um, but you know, Stan, I mean, the miracle worker, I guess. Um, I mean, he can't build rosters, but he can certainly take daps and make them to take them to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, man. All I'm saying is, <laughs> all I'm saying is this: if you are a GM of a team, here's how you here's how you go about it. First, you, you go to Daps. Daps. You're like Daps. I need you to make. I need you to make a roster for me. A very good roster in NA. Then two years down the line, you go to go to Stanislaw, who's probably ruined his career at that point. Stanislaw, I need you to take over for Daps. And there you go. Well, it worked out. No, but it was. It was honestly. It was really cool to see some of these players perform on the stage too. Um, I think this is. I mean, as much as you want to give credit to Stan, 
I mean, ultimately, these players also had to show up. Yeah, I think, um, like, I th- like, I think the fundamental problem of the previous NRG was, like, the uh, the individuals, like, kind of fucked up. And I mean, like, the yeah. individual stars. Cirque. Yeah. Cirque. Um, Ethan, especially. You think, I think Ethan's been on a downslide. I think the only one that's actually been, like, proven is Breezy. Yeah, I agree. So it was, like... Tarek was kind of, uh, was super underwhelming, too, uh, yeah. at first. So, like, it's, um, it, it was always... It was always iffy. It's always why it's been their CD side that's been the problem. It's because, like I said, it's the individual side, and they're they I mean, kind of just and down there. This is this is what I really like about Stan, though, as well. It's like, and you know, when he was playing for Complexity, um, it it helps immensely when your IGL is actually a super good fragger. Like Stan is actually, I think, one of the best fraggers in that team. I mean, um, not. I, I mean, will th- say. He was fucking fire against Astralis, like to the point where I thought he was the best player on that fucking server. Yeah, he was fucking uh, fire. I will also yeah, yeah. say he shit the bed in the semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm not know. going to say he's the best. He's the best fragger in that team in any. I would. <laughs> I would. I would say the best, but I think he's one of the best. And like, I, I, I 100% agree. Like, he has days where he just disappears, and that's kind of the bad thing with him. But. Like the fact that he even shows up like almost consistent, like in like I would say like it's, it's almost like a 50-50 kind of split, maybe even like 60-40, where he like shows up as like the top frag. Like the fact that he can even top frag, in, in my opinion, is just that's kind a of crazy. that's a pretty good bonus to have in the in-game meter. I'll agree. Exactly, that's that's a really sick bonus to have, and I think this elevates the rest of the team too. Also, to also have... his top his top fragging is like really sneaky. He's not like headshots is like I'm in a well, place you'd never expected. That, that's that's because he likes to, he likes to be he likes to um he likes to um be lurker a lot yeah um, he like he he like gets a lot of like small like kills that you don't even see on camera most of the time because it happened like sort of like off mm-hmm. sort of like map right like it's just like some weird fucking angle where it's like oh how the fuck are you even here like he's the kind of guy that on mirage he sneaks into window and then suddenly in ct like, like, he finds like a one second window time frame where he can actually sneak through without anybody seeing him yeah basically like other people are playing cs and this guy's like playing whack-a-mole it's invisible. it just shows <laughs> yeah, up out of nowhere basically. like it's literally how he plays i'm not even joking <laughs> Basically, and I, it, I, I think, I think it really elevates the rest of the team when your Gotham IGL can put up the numbers too, because yeah, like it, 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 I'm not saying it demotivates you, but you know, when for example, when your IGL doesn't frag, let's say, look at Zeus for example, right? Don't you think it's a little bit frustrating for Simple when he plays a game, and I don't want to shit on Zeus because he's retiring, but still, like Zeus dies like first time every Gotham round, for example. Just as an example, I'm not even saying it happens, but just I mean, as an example, right? I mean, it must be frustrating for Simple when he when when he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna play the op on the Mirage on the CT side," and Zeus is like, "Not only do I need you to play on Window, I need you to play on A side. I also need you to play B side. What? That's like twice as much work." Yeah. Well, no when, choice. When you know you can you can rely on the other players, it just makes it so much easier to play the game. So yeah. um, I think that that's really what helped the story. That's one big part of why I think Stan immediately helped this team right away. Versus just being a good in-game leader. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, um, I actually thought it like I won't say right away, just because I think like the period before the major, I thought it was like exactly the same as before. Oh uh, well, no, true. But no, I, true. I, I will, I, I will be fair to Stan in, in the sense that they just went to a bunch of tournaments, didn't have time to do with anything. This is the, the actual time, time they he's implemented shit into the game. So. Don't don't they have like a really sick streak of like only up until the semifinals they only like dropped like one map or whatever? Yeah, like... it was like it was like something ridiculous like that. So you know they're. I mean, I thought I thought they looked really good throughout throughout the tournament until the semifinals. So I thought I think I think like I think Cirque is better than like, actually I think Cirque was slowly getting better anyway uh, at the end of the DAFs period. But I think he's like probably the best he's ever been. I think I think Breezy's always been underrated. I think he was always this good straight up. So I don't, I don't think that's changed. I think Ethan's and gotten to, worse. And to me, out of like the the three sort of like. What I call them youngsters. Well, the three that are in Tarek and Stan, basically. Yeah. Um, Cirque to me actually has the highest ceiling. I think Cirque as an opera is really fucking insane. If if he plays, if if he gets into no, the I think like I I agree with you, but I don't. I have the least faith in him reaching. That oh, ceiling. I I agree. I agree. A hundred percent agree. I have the least faith, but I think he has the highest sort of ceiling. If like in that one percent chance that he does, mm-hmm. I think he's like a really sick opera. But yeah, I agree. I think I I would have more faith in uh, Breezy hundred percent. Yeah, I think like I mean, Bree- Breezy shows like we'll get get to it later, but yeah, basically like Cirque is a Cirque is a choker. No, I agree. Definitely. All right. I mean, we we've played uh, you know my uh, our complexity team has played enough against NRG in the past. Like uh, trust me, I know. Like Cirque should 
should be so much better than he actually is, but like, I don't know what it is. Like, like that's always been, that's also like part of part of why I, w- I didn't like the Daps lineup, uh, the Daps kick as much, because like in my mind I was thinking, do they not realize it's actually like the star? Pl- they literally just have to wait for star players to develop right. to get to the next level. It doesn't really have much to do with Daps, but and, fair, and Stanislaus honestly, is doing work. So who am I to who am I to criticize at this point? Honestly, honestly though, I wouldn't be surprised if they still made a change if that was somehow possible for them. Um, because I mean, I mean, there's Stan no. Way... Is a, Stan is a smart guy. He's gonna realize very, very quickly um, how the, how far this roster can go, really, uh, under his on his leadership. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they still made a change in this roster period. I, I just want to know where they'd go at this point, but we'll see. No, 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 that's a good point. Yeah. All right, the big matchup, the the first the the first of the three finals. I'll get back to that later. But basically, yeah. Liquid versus Astralis. Um, kind of disappointing. Who, who who did you think was going to win when they met up in the quarters though before it happened did you have a pick i did not have a pick but actually well well i wasn't actually as confident in liquid as i as i as i um was in going into the major going into the major i was kind of confident until, until yes because basically they're killing everybody yeah then they lose against energy and Evangar, and i'm like hmm maybe this is not it but then at the same time i thought to myself you know, ah, this is just best of best of one this is just you know but Compass is best of two, best of three. They're gonna like crush again, and they did. I mean, they did take out North and Mouse. I mean, but the Mouse, then against against Mouse, it was also so close, and I was like, "Huh, maybe this isn't the liquid that I'm looking for." Um, yeah. So I guess I, again, I wasn't re- actually really sure going into that into that semi uh, into that quarterfinals, but I'm, I in hindsight, I mean, I'm not the thing, like, in the least surprised. Like, I guess I agree with you, but it's not like Astralis was looking fucking banging in the group stages. Either. Yeah, that's that's true. That's that's, true. that's that's like my problem with it. It's like, yeah, you beat Forze, was it, or G- no G meters? Beat G two, and then you lost energy pretty convincingly. Well, except for the train game, it's like a ridiculous overtime. So I guess it wasn't that right. convincing. And then crazy, crazy one, like it wasn't that convincing either. So I was like, eh. And you I think know? in hindsight, it almost felt like Astralis. Like if you if you look at their run. Was just warming up, and then they warmed up to nothing because Vanguard didn't even give them a good run for the money. I mean, they warmed up to the quarterfinals, and they're like, "This is what we came for. We didn't come to win the major. We came to ruin Liquid's life." You see all those interviews, man. Dupree's like, "What do you think about yeah. this, Dupree?" Well, we just came here to stop Liquid, and that's what we did. Congratulations. Ne- hey, ne- next, Device wins the major. What do you think about this historic moment? Oh, I just want to beat Liquid, take their top slot, then peace out. I was like, "What?" <laughs> And that's kind of that's really what I like about CS versus Dota. It's like the fact that there's been the storyline. Like if like people, you know, oh, Astralis, if you hadn't gone to Blast events, you could have stayed number one. But now Liquid took it. Then Liquid won the fastest uh, IEM Grand Slam ever. IEM Grand Slam possible as well, or not the fastest. I think they missed it by one to have the yeah. fastest possible, right? But it's like um, the one next four is like instantly. So yeah, so it's like. Like I, I love that because this was perfect. the it, The only way it could have been more perfect it was actually if it was actually a final, in my opinion. Yeah. Would have been um, way better. And than then, and, and and Liquid obviously showing up as well, but like this was just like I, I agree with you. Like Liquid showing up would have been made, made it better, but I think um, I'm not sure how you saw this series. I just thought I just thought Astralis outthought Liquid the entire way through. And I mean, the vertical pick in, in the first place. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Nobody saw that coming. And I think, yeah. I, I basically agree with the analysts on the desk. Or, like, I think this, like, outside, if you don't, if you didn't have any access to the scrims, as we didn't, you would assume it was a mistake. And the reason you would assume it was a mistake is because everybody who's picked Vertigo as an underdog, basically, you're basically just saying, you're, pray, you're praying to upset you're them. You're praying, right. You're praying to upset them, yeah. And as it turned out, no, Astralis is like, we actually have a game plan. They're really fucking they, good on that map. They destroy, did fairly good on T side, and then when the CT side, they like they basically bamboozled Liquid. Like, oh look, a flank immediately, and then like, oh shit, we have to worry about flank. And then it's fucking like they, and then fucking throw the early smoke on a ramp, and then basically just do like a billion different setups and gimmicks behind it. Like they never know when the fucking flank is coming. Yeah. Like Stewie's like, oh maybe I'll go get info B. Oh no, they actually smoked off all of B. He's isolated in the two v one. He's gone. Like they had no clue what the fuck they were going to do on the T side, and then they and- died. I think watching that match, it almost felt like Liquid never had a chance to actually play Counter Strike. Yeah. Um, like because Charles decided this game. Like Vertigo was over so quickly that you basically knew it had to come down to overpass. And then an overpass, it was like, um, all right. Are we, I mean, 
this is i mean i mean i know that on 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 paper it says like 16 13 but it still felt so overwhelmingly one-sided in, in a uh, lot that's of ways because um here's the thing the first half was close actually the first half was probably liquid favored because i think liquid at nine it was like it was liquid five nine six yeah and but... that's a t-side that's a very good t-side on overpass but like the reason it feels one side is because the Charles is like okay boys let's get to work after Glade pulled off the bullshit round, you know what I'm talking about? Like two, <laughs> yeah. two, two, two through the smoke. Yeah, yeah. After yeah. he pulled off that round, he's like, "Okay, boys, it's time for uh, it's time for Master Tactician to uh, teach these NA scrubs a lesson." And, and Liquid just again, it just never felt like they actually got to play what what made them the number one team in the first place, right? Yeah, basically, like that, that's that, that's the genius of Astralis's plan, uh, game plan inside, like in the Beto and inside the servers, like. Right. Ver- basically vertical like they if you look at vertical they basically denied liquid any chance to get fair duels and it basically frustrated all their team play and then when they got to the t side of overpass they're like we're gonna be do a b execute every time and every b execute like it just stacked on top of each other like i like i i couldn't do like a full analysis but basically because because nobody actually reads full analysis but basically like the problem with dealing with astralis on the b side for liquid was like every subsequent round Astralis flashed a different position from Liquid. And so, like, in, like, one of the first executes, like, Liquid had three towards uh, Sewer, which is basically, like, the closest area towards the monster. And then, like, they threw a flashbang. They threw flashbang perfectly to blind all three. One in, killed all three. And I'm like, okay, we'll do a different setup. Then do a different setup. Then do a different setup. And every single right. setup, Glaive called the exact right flashes to blind <laughs> them. Or, like, in one of the setups, like, he threw, like, fake... He threw, like, smokes towards um, middle. And then... And basically, uh, they they blocked off monsters, so there's no information. So like basically, that in Liquid's mind, they're like, okay, they are hitting B all the time, so let's just rotate two guys into water. They did that, and then like the execute comes in, and like the execute comes in such a way where like basically the guy in water is split up from the other guy who's supporting him, is split up from the guy in the actual site, and then they all get like in three v one duels. And it's like, what the fuck are they supposed to do? Like it was over. Like tactically speaking, like Glaive just outthought them on every step of the way. And the, it's just further, like the. It's just further proof that Astralis as a team is just so, like you know, like when when people were making the case that oh, Liquid is now the number one team and like haha, Astralis and like, I, I was I don't think anybody and I think this is what people a lot of like when 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 they when they see Thorin for example making that point too right, what a lot of people just overlook is that this is just a moment like I think everybody's fully aware that when when shit gets when shit hits the fan again, like when when the pressure's on again, Estrella is gonna fucking show up, right? And, mm-hmm. and they did like this. It felt like this this major felt very calculated from them. Like I mean, yeah, they had a iffy group stage or whatever, but like the playoffs just felt super like super God straightforward. Road. Yeah, it was just like they're, all right, they're, they're straight up the best playoffs team in t- CS history. Time, time to win a major again, and yeah. then they did. So it was, uh... yeah. It was, yeah, right. They didn't drop a single game in any of the three in the last three majors that they won, right? In the playoffs. Yeah. They are basically that's... uh 24-0 or something. That's fucking scary. I mean, it's, it's uh... You can't even win your own map against them. Liquid is literally the best team on Overpass. They couldn't they couldn't do shit on their CD side. And their CD side is literally the reason they are the best on the team on that t- map. And I think this is what um I you know we talk about Dota a lot, but uh um uh, like in I'm not like it, it's a little bit different in CS, obviously, because not showing up outside of majors is kind of important in, in CS because the, it's way more important major, in CS than it is in Dota. Yeah, yeah because in, in CS, like the circuit is bigger than just the major, mm-hmm. um, and the major itself doesn't even reward you that much money in comparison to just no regular circuit, right? Yeah. Um, but still, like I I have no doubt in my mind that Astral is always going to show up at any major, and mm-hmm. I think this is what a lot of people what a lot of people need to realize when these discussion happen around who's the best team right now. Yeah. Liquid could be the best team in the world right now, or maybe end system, or maybe like even if Astralis isn't a top five team at that point, you still have to expect them to come into the major unless there's been some major roster issues or whatever. But or like uh, devices are already dying from sickness. Yeah, like that, yeah, that exactly. one time, like, like the one time that they one actually t- failed was because like you know, that. Yeah. So, so like that core device to pre Zipniks, that's I spent my entire yeah. CSGO youth yeah. watching them destroy NA hopes and dreams. Yeah. And it's goddamn beautiful. Yeah, shout outs to the, the uh, Chinese Chinese Dota memes. Those are I, I, I missed that one. Spent my entire youth watching Burning make do last hits. 
Chinese memes are so good. They're, they're, so, much, they're, they're so, so much better. So much better. Maybe it's because they just have so many people that can, can come up with memes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, man. I think that's it. Like, it's not... Like, uh, people, I mean, people talk about the cultural adherence. It's not like that one had cultural adherence in it. It's like, they're just funnier. Because well, there's more, more funnier. of them. It's more people. So, more memes. But yeah, like... More memes. I, I, I will say the, the last thing. Like, I agree. Like, Liquid wasn't didn't show, didn't show up in ne- nearly to the point. Where, like, I think... Actually, I think Alij was like... I don't know if you saw it, but basically Alicia had an interview was like, I think we were like 75% of our power. I think that's like an accurate assessment of how good they were at the major. Yeah. But I think and, unless they were at 100%, like, I think Astralis was always going to win this because I, like the game plan is just so fucking good. In, in all fairness, I think it could have helped Li- Liquid if they hadn't met later. Um, yeah, you know, cause because like, this, some, this like being some things might have been maybe, revealed. Like maybe the vertical pick yeah. might have been revealed. Maybe the overpass executes might have been revealed. Exactly, and then sort of like them also being able to sort of like quote unquote warm up against other teams, you know, finding their rhythm, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's really important, actually. But I mean, I mean, sort of like if they wanted that to happen, they should have done better in the group stage. Yeah. At, at the same time, though, and this is what I really hate about CS, and I'm glad that it's going to change. But the player break before the major makes zero sense. It, made, ne- it never made sense. Yeah. So I'm glad that it, it is going to change, right? Yeah. Like, it's the changing. player break is going to be after the major now. Yeah. Or... It's, yeah. yeah, this is the last major where it, where it is yeah. um, after the player so break. So really I'm really glad about the... Like, the last five so were after stupid. the player break. Um, like, it didn't even make sense in the first one. So I was like, yeah. why is that why so is it stupid. going so long? So stupid. Especially especially now, the fallout, because the major is naturally going to have teams making roster changes. Wow. Now every team is rushing to sign up with a with a five-man roster for all these leagues. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Stupid. So, so yeah, like, uh, and the, here's the thing. I actually think like Liquid is actually a good preparation. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I, I want to call them preparation team. They learn from their mistakes, right? So yeah, they generally do. So I think that I think that would have helped. But unfortunately for them, they ran into Astralis too early. Now let's go to a team that isn't that great at preparation. Um, according to Glaive, of course. Uh, NRG. So they. Uh... Stan, 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 Stan got the, Stan got the work in, got or got worked on, I guess. Especially after that interview, where he's like, "Oh, I don't care about either of them. We beat both of them already." Well, buddy, group stage versus playoffs is a whole different, whole different. Uh, uh, here, here's different the thing: I don't of... actually know if Dap. I don't. I don't know enough about Daps as to whether or not he like prepares for opponents that way. But I certainly know Stanislaw does it. And what I mean by that is like Stanis- Stanislaw has always like he's always been very specific. He's always been like, I work on my own shit. I work on my as own shit. As far as I know, Stanislaw does not believe in counter shredding. No, he doesn't believe in it at all. He does He believes in um in um in preparing yourself and make just having your own strats and your own sets and your own sort of like basics down. And that should be enough to beat a team. And I, I mean. th- like I think that's here, here's the thing. I think that's fundamentally fine in a long season. I think it's fundamentally flawed yes. when you're in, talking about something like this. Absolutely, I hundred percent agree with you. And I mean, I mean, even even if yeah, even though it's kind of fundamentally okay in a long season, I still think that's actually just fundamentally wrong in a lot of ways too. Because like you, you have to prepare for opponents individually. Like, like that's just the way it is. No, I'll I'll say this: it's theoretically correct if you are literally the best player ever. Well, yeah, and that's only happened a few times. Like, Flash could get away with this in Brood War, where he was like literally called God. Okay, Tasia technically got away with this in StarCraft Two, but that's only because he was dominating foreigner tournaments. And then, fun- funnily enough, because he didn't do the preparation side at all, he always lost in GSLs and stuff. So uh, there, there's an example of a very similar Stannis Law. Uh, Daigo is like this, but Daigo is different in that he actually knows it's fundamentally bad. In his brain, though, he's just thinking, if I can't... Actually, no. Daigo's problem is that he does preparation, but does it the wrong way. And then, like, what I mean by the wrong way is, like, you know how, like, other teams, when they prepare, they're like, I see a weakness, I go after the weakness? Daigo's like, oh, this guy's really strong in this area. I want to see if I could beat him in this area. That's how he prepares. And that's why he, like, that's why he always gets upset. Because, like, he literally tries to fight them in their best area possible. But in this in this particular case, like, is like... Yeah, we played Astralis before, but we're not going to um, look at the old mistakes. And then and they got trashed on train, didn't they? They did got trashed on train. I, I will say, I will say, I think that I mean, 
maybe that's the wrong assumption of me to make because maybe the i mean anyway the, the point i'm trying to make is i think they could have they probably would have lost regardless of how they prepared against astralis because astralis was just significantly better in that semifinals anyway than they were yeah, before like, uh, i think here, here's the thing i think basically everybody shit the bed except breezy yeah i think breezy like literally died trying to carry the other four and then it was too much weight <laughs> NRG was just night and day between their group stage, uh, their legend stage performance versus this 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 game. Like it was night and day between this game and Navi. <laughs> and Navi, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And then obviously Astralis was already on the playoff train. Like, oh yeah, we just trolled Liquid. Let's just trolled this guys, uh, these guys. Uh, we already got we already got what we came for. We just got to finish this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's play some bonus games. Basically, basically, and I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that Liquid series was the toughest they had in this entire playoffs run. It, it, it was like, it, absolutely, it, 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 had, absolutely it had to was, be actually, no doubt it had to be yeah everybody everything else was so easy um so nrg was just like walk in the park and then avangar was just stealing avangar was like was waking up in the morning <laughs> like that's how easy it was. like i couldn't think of anything easier Stret than walking stretching a little park. bit stretching a little bit maybe 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 get up and drink a water mm -hmm. that was that was avangar i don't know did you see the um i don't know if you saw this but did you see the glaive interview about uh about energy's preparation i did not what did he say basically um i f forget who was interviewing him frankie or something but yeah. basically she asked him like oh she, she was talking to him to the major and then he's like yeah then um we prepared but i guess it didn't really matter because they didn't really prepare and he's like you can sound a bit disappointed it's like are you disappointed that it was this easy he's like yeah i kind of am because we prepared we prepared a lot and i guess i guess that's the difference between me us and them it's like we have different different definitions of preparing because when they prepare, they just they just say it in an interview and then they don't prepare. Whereas when we prepare, we actually prepare. Yeah. And no, and I mean that's that. Uh, it, it, <laughs> that was fucking cold I, blooded. I, 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 it's actually funny because that's I, I actually just a, not only a good summary for, for the NRG game, but also just a good summary for this maybe like this playoff or this major for Astralis in general. Like Astralis came prepared, but it felt like every other proponent was like I'm. I'm not saying that. Liquid or Avangard didn't do their homework against them. Whatever I mean, they did, well, Liqu obviously wasn't enough, right? Well, Liquid's Liquid couldn't have done homework for Astralis. Like I said, well, like, the, the shit they Astralis pulled out, right. they didn't even know. Right. No, it nobody didn't even knew, exist right? yet. It didn't even nobody exist yet. Except, yeah, except for maybe one team that Astr that Astralis allowed to scrim against. Them yeah, on, whereas uh, like uh, Energy well. did have did have like Astral what Astralis pulled on Energy is stuff they could have learned because they played on no, the sure. train, and there was like like basically what Energy should have done to technically prepare is like try to figure out their own weaknesses because glaive figured out their weaknesses pretty early on the weaknesses are is like if you basically deny their individual fraggers early picks they don't know what to do no but but what i'm trying to or what i was trying to say is like astralis was so ahead of the curve that it felt like everybody else was just incredibly lackluster yeah they were blocks ahead uh, right they were and they were and that's just and this is just it's just kind of i mean i i use this word a lot today but it's just kind of scary that a team can win a tournament like that um, yeah. i mean like this, this is the third time they've done it this way i know i know and that's that's like that makes it triple scary right yeah. um but it's also kind of fun honestly in a way because it's so fun to watch astralis play because yeah. it's just like if, if they're at this level it's just master class yeah. And it's just kind of also fun to see other teams trying to catch up. And this is why I'm looking forward to... I mean, again, I keep repeating myself. But it's kind of the same in Dota as it is in CS. I'm looking forward to these other teams trying to find the right combination to sort of contest Astralis in the next major. Uh, I think... I don't think Liquid need changes. Just, no, Liquid doesn't but... need changes, but they need to... And, and I think... But I think they, they got shown that there's still so much they have to learn as a team. I just don't know if they can. They, I like. I don't think they could do the stuff that Charles is doing. Basically, I think they have to Probably figure not. something else out. Yeah. Like, I, like the stuff that Charles is doing is very particular. I think to Glaive and Zonic. Like I don't. I, Glaive Zonic and I guess like the the, the original core. Like the, the original core is very specific too. So it's like, it's gonna be real hard if you're trying to yeah. copy them. Uh, but yeah, I think. I don't even we think don't we need have... to go over the Amagar thing. It's just instant nah, death. That was just that was just they instant had the best death. seats in the stadium. Yeah. They they got they gotta be like, oh cool. I I oh, like cool, I gotta meet a long server. a long time friend, the major finals. Nice seeing yeah. you. See you next time. <laughs> Whatever. But, uh, See you next time with another like super weird roster with like with underdog teams and Kazakhs. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Astralis is the best. At least in this major. Yeah.
good good summary. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there? All right, I think that about covers it. Is there any other? Yeah. No, any I other think the rest topic? is really just uh, roster shuffles, which I think we'll do a show about once once the dust has settled on in both scenes. Yeah. Like, gonna uh, be a big one, I think, for both actually. Oh, I will um, say that I will say this because I don't know, because it's not technically part of this roster shuffle. But basically, I think every team except Vitality fucked up the last roster shuffle in CS:GO, and except Liquid and Vitality, I guess. And what I mean by that is, um, a bunch of them, like G Two, Fnatic, NIP, all of them should have tried to get Kerrigan. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and like he, Kerrigan already already did an interview. He was like, "Oh yeah, I was gonna uh, like nobody contacted me until Mouse." So basically, all of you had a gigantic window. And, and every, you guess what? Fnatic shows yeah. exist. He's mm-hmm. gone. NIP, I don't know what the fuck you guys are doing. G two, you're now going international. You're like a season too late. Like you guys all fucked uh, up. I, I think uh, I think one of the additional or this doesn't necessarily correlate to that but one, one one issue i also have with the cs scene is the legend system if you're if you're a top eight team at this major now right let's let's look at these players right now all the right go, 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 go. yeah do you really make the necessary roster changes or do you make the roster changes that allow you to stay in the legend stage you make the, the ro- most people just make the ch- uh, changes that allow them to stay yeah. that's like the fundamental like, problem that, with that, cloud that, nine that, that that's like th- that's why that's why teams like NIP and Fnatic for like the last two to three years have made the worst roster changes in the history of roster changes, because they just keep their roster the legend spot. Or I mean, I think Cloud Nine jumps them both, but yes. Well, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, like these teams just think they it's fine to have these changes and just get by with sticker money, effectively, right? I don't even and think this sticker like, money even gets them that much. Sticker, nah, I know no it, it, it probably doesn't, but it's like this. This idea of like, oh, I want to be at the major, and you know, oh, well, how can I be at the major? Oh, I get a free ticket, cool, because I once happened to have this miraculous performance. Um, so every team that has a free ticket to the major is going to make stupid roster decisions, and that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. And this is why I really, really think they need to revamp this, re- revamp the system. It's going to take a lot of work. Not but really. It wouldn't take a lot. It, of work it really at doesn't. All. It, it actually doesn't. I know. It's just like there's this there's a system that Dota Two no longer uses. The, um, the DPC <laughs> from. I keep saying this like that. That particular DPC, it wasn't that good for Dota. It's actually amazing for CS Go. It's super amazing for CS because CS already has a functioning it's an um, ecosystem. Ecosystem. Um, so yeah, I I 100 agree with you. Like they should uh, or any anything really anything in my opinion right now would probably be better than this legend system because it actually is cancer for a lot of these teams. Like a lot of these teams are content with mediocrity or even worse than mediocrity because they keep their legend spot. And what's worse about that is because these teams are prestigious sort of orgs and they are major contending teams. They get free invites to like these events too. How many invites has Cloud9 gotten despite being irrelevant for like? I Two always years. assumed that had more to do with their org being really popular than it had to do with them being well, good. Pr- probably, yeah, it probably like is them, that. them and Virtus Pro, are like the biggest, the biggest uh, violators of this. Offender, yeah, or violators, yeah. You know, offenders, yeah, it's just, that's probably it's just really, it's just, it's they, just really stupid. Their, their CS aff- definitely offended me by the end. So, <laughs> absolutely, and that's this is why I was really happy to see sort of like. Um, I'm so fanatic. happy. I'm so happy. Cloud Nine reset with DAPS finally. Jesus. Yeah, Fnatic then, had to didn't get get to this major. I was happy about that because they could rework. Nip, get, I mean, I don't care about uh, an IP actually anymore. So it's like whatever. No, we're done with. Uh, I, I will say this: you, you you're calling a rework. I'm calling a reunion. Golden and Flasha oh, back God. again. No, dude. Oh, like God. you, you might think the legend stage is why Fnatic made all these bad roster changes. I actually think it's because in their mind they think when was the last time things worked? Let's try that again. <laughs> That's all they do every single time. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, you're actually right. No, you're actually right. I, I even the forgot only, about I, yeah, the I only time they didn't was when they got golden the first time around, I guess. But every yeah. other time, uh, oh, shit. Yeah. All right, I think about does it. Uh, yeah, we won't go too deeply. Uh, got any last words to say? Nah, it was fun. See you next time, I guess. Yeah, uh, uh I guess I'll say writing for Deserto now, see how that goes. And oh, damn, uh, congrats! Yeah, and one more thing, um. I want two years from now, Stanislaw will win the major, but with Cloud9 after they kept apps. <laughs> See you guys later.